they had this um, on Facebook. And I'm sure most people know about Mamadou now. You're out there. And they, <laughs> I mean, your contributions, <laughs> you are witty. You are a hell of a writer. You are funny. And you are one person. When you write in vernacular, I can read it easily. Everybody is <laughs> like that. Seriously. Thank you, even, thank you. even when I try to write in Wolof, sometimes I run into problems. But for you, it just comes natural. Can you can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Because, because he went to Nusrat. Because he went to Nusrat and not Gambia. When he writes in Wolof, Masamba, you do not. It's because, just like he, he went he went to Nusrat, not Gambia High School. He went to a proper school. <laughs> so that is so easy to read. I mean, uh, you want to comment on that moment? You you really you really yeah, a hell of a writer, definitely. Yeah, I mean. I don't know. I mean, and I think I want to, um, before I even start the conversation, I just want to put a disclaimer out there that uh, everything that I write is my opinion. I don't claim to be an expert in anything, and I don't think my opinion is as valid, is, is more valid than anybody else's. Um, but I just try to contribute in the conversations that we're having uh, to try to um, dig ourselves out of the hole that we're in. So, um, I just want to make that disclosure and I put it out there. And if people, if it resonates with people, salam. If it doesn't, you know, salam. And then Purman, it's just about having that conversation and learning from each other and try to have that discussion um, devoid of emotions, you know, and, and with, with, with respect and, and dignity and tact. Um, but as far as the writing goes, um, I think it's, it's, it's just about, um, exploring my 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 talent because sometimes people don't allow themselves to explore their talent because they don't think that okay i can do it or whatever they have some reservations but i think mm -hmm. allowing that growth to happen uh, mm -hmm. because in life we all there's we all have some type of talent some will explore it and some will not and it depends on the individual and and their willingness to 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 follow their passion so and i think that's where it comes from and and i think um living in Banjul and moving to Bacao and then moving to here has allowed me to really be able to navigate, um, you know, and be able to express myself uh, because sometimes self-expression is what's going to get you places and it's, what, it's what's going to open doors for you. So it's just part of exploring my, my my expression and as a person and it's it's an art it's you know because writing is an art you know i mean um some people that's how one writer is better than the other because of the way they manipulate words because writing is all about manipulating words using words at the right time using it in the right context and and using it to have the 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 the, the most impact you know um so uh put money it's, it's just basically that you know um so that's how I write. It just comes naturally. Um, I don't try to force a writer. Oh, harama, write the defkomu funny. It it just comes out, you know, because that's just who but, I but am. But you're funny though. I mean, you you really you really. I don't know whether you intentionally do that or you're just witty. You have the skills, but you are funny. I'm telling you. Even yeah, when and, and I think it's practice issues. too. Yeah, it's practice. If you just allow, you know. So because writing on Facebook. As because sometimes people say, oh, you tiny high school don't have been any, but tiny high school can more than be there. We just turn in our essays and they mark it and they give it to us, right? <laughs> because we never really, there was no platform to really express yourself. Um, right. You know, journalists select like you and been there and then you see them significantly. But other than that, there were no other platforms for people to really but You can actually. Yeah, yeah. So that's it's, that's just, that's kinda, it's just this growth process. Yeah, also we just, um, Suleiman Ba, Dr. Ba just joined us, want to welcome him. Suleiman, this is not your first time. I mean, you've been on this platform before. <laughs> so how thank are you, you, thank you. I'm, I'm good, thank you, Uncle Musayen. Greetings, uh, Uncle Jao, Sarian. Okay, Sarian, they, they, uh, Mr. Suleiman. Suleiman. Thank you. Yeah. There, there is one rule here. You cannot call me uncle and call Musayen uncle. <laughs> so, I will be grandpa and I will be uncle. You know, that's how it works. You know, it's not even close. No, it's not grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> but hey man, it's good to it's good to it's good to see you always. And yeah, Pastor but, but, is always reminding me that um when are you gonna go and take over the um the doy leadership? He's always telling me that. <laughs> 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 
He's my next six. Now and uh, Walker Bar, greetings. Now, Yangi won his a gun, see, huh? The man I prayed, who done them, Jim Tedu, let's meet at the park. When are you going to take your buddy to the gym, man? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's another thing, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I have to talk about this. You are also, personally, I think you are an independent. And any time yeah. I come and put out my independent credentials, they could say to me, hey, if you're independent, we say I'm the mother of You know, you are <laughs> Why mom no one and yo you are independent mom? No, why that koya ga by now because they always claim that I was joy. You know, uh -huh. especially be my halifanyu if he when I when I went and then took that picture when I uh, and I gave him a copy of that satire that I wrote. And right. um, you know, he, he he loved it. So but um, so that was their evidence that I am doing, you know. So I guess if I, if if Dabo or anybody was supposed to come here, then my then that would mean that I am. And that would make you to be, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but we'll, then I, we'll, I we'll, think we'll, we'll take you in, uh, you know, in a heartbeat. So, <laughs> so, so because because then I, I will become biased because I don't want that because then I will be, you know, sympathetic to bias. But put Mandal, I just want to hold. Our police stations accountable and our government accountable and i just want to stand alone if nobody's standing with me fine if everybody wants to join that's that's you know that's their prerogative but i just want to be independent yeah there's absolutely no doubt your writing speaks for itself i think you are always very critical and um one cannot see any kind of partisanship that one can hang its head on definitely but well, the reason why we reached out to you obviously it was a post that you um on leadership Mm -hmm. that I'm like, wow, maybe we need to kind of have a conversation and flesh this thing out. Very interesting. You started out by saying, we will continue to struggle because we believe that leadership revolves around our own self-interest, power, and control. This is the biggest misconception we have in our society, and it always manifests itself in our leaders regardless of their level. That is Mamadundao. Leadership should be about having a vision, and inspiring your people to achieve the vision. How one, how one views leadership matters. Our lack of understanding of leadership is why people quickly become, and here he goes again <laughs> with words, and feel entitlement there in a leadership role. There are too many people in our political sphere who are seeking leadership for their own personal interests, power and control. In a society where leadership is seen as a means of self-enhancement, he went on, self-enhancement, power and control, development will be scarce. We are not interested in collective power to preserve our dignity, but rather in individual or kabudu power. <laughs> this is the cause of all the dishonesty, hostility and insult you see every day. If I had a guess, I would say that 90% of those in leadership roles lack the necessary leadership qualities. And it's apparent in their communication and behavior. Leadership is not about kufang, it's about having foresight and bringing out the best in others. We're quick to say, you sangam for president or some other position, I hope I'm not you sangam, without vetting their leadership skills. So Mumadwan, you went on and on and on. <laughs> <laughs> Can you kind of flesh it out for us? What are you trying to say, especially in leadership and the Gambia, whether it's the politics, or whether it's on Facebook, what are you trying to say? And when you, what was the thinking? What was the inspiration for you to write this? If I could put yeah, it because out. I, you know, I think whatever I am saying, we all we all know. Some choose to notice it, and some choose not to. Uh, because even from time Jawara, you know, Hedna Jawara, sir, you know, you can excuse that a little bit because you know it was after colonialism, and um, the, and he just took over. But there was no vision because if Jawara had vision, 30 years is more than enough to manifest your vision, right? So, and, and it's not just the leadership um, because we have, we, we the people make 
people that are leading us about them because we worship them, we sing and dance for them, we go to them, and that is where the Kufan comes from. And, and some of these people, they are working for us. So why should we be chasing them and dancing when they are not delivering, calling them honorable every time somebody gets into leadership? The next thing you know, they are building a house, they start marrying wives, they're driving SUVs. Where is that money come from? Right? It's the public money that they're using. And we can we have seen that over and over again during Jawara, during Yaya Jame. Now, and if we don't try to change our mentality regarding leadership, it's going to continue. Because most people they get in. Some of these things we already know that these people have bad attitude, but we will elect them into leadership anyways. Right. Look at the parliamentarians. As soon as they got in, it was about them, how they were going to get loans for house, how they were going to get cars, how they were going to get this, that and the other. So it's always about them. And we also make it about them. So that's I think it's the misconception that we have about um, uh, about uh, leadership. So in a, in a nutshell, the people that are governing us don't know how to govern. And we, the people that are being governed, don't know how to be governed. Hmm. Interesting. Well, now, can you tell us, I mean, what is leadership and how do you identify Nekini is a good leader or he has leadership qualities? How do you right. go about doing that? If it is not a subjective matter, I can look at this person and say, oh, he has the leadership quality. You can mm -hmm. look at another person and say he has the leadership quality. What in God's name is leadership and how do you identify that? Well, well, you, you look at people and see how they carry themselves, number one. Do they have empathy? in the people that, that they lead? And do they have a vision, right? And, and leadership also should start from a very young age because right now, let's say in, in, in STEM, right? They, they are putting programs out there, new ways of teaching children um, where the teaching is not about um, bringing them and giving them subjects. It's, about, it's more about inquiry-based teaching or project-based teaching where the students themselves identify what question they want to answer, what they're interested in, and then you put them in, in, in groups to collaborate. So in that group, then the kids will decide in that group who will lead that, 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 that project. So this is from a very young age. So this is how you start identifying leaders from a very young age. I know, but I'm just giving this example so that we can start thinking about this for the future. Mm -hmm. But as far as Gambia goes, we really never had good example of leaders. So everything that every leader that comes about is what they saw from the other person that was there before them, right? Mm -hmm. And you become a leader, you get called honorable, you got called all this for them, Nityang Lab, New York, and they get engrossed in that, they get sucked into that because of the ego. So we massage their ego too much. So unless we start identifying people that really have the right character and, and, and the right vision and the empathy, because those are very important. Baro, look at what Baro is doing right now. It's about him. So he got the parliamentarian to push that uh, presidential retirement bill, right? Mm -hmm. We all know that the, nothing is working. So if, any, nothing is, if nothing is working, why do you deserve such compensation after you leave? because it's always about them and we make it about them. The parliamentarians made it about him and they also made it about them by putting bills also for them to be giving cars and all these things. So we have to start thinking critically and, and vetting people. So we have to come up with a vetting process. There is no path through leadership in Gambia. Anybody can just jump from Nyamukono and then and be a leader. That's what happened in Jam, right? And Baro, we just pulled him from, out of from nowhere because it was convenient. And then we nobody ever vetted nothing. And then we just put him there. And then it's big that he was the leader, right? I think with Baro Man, first time I knew that he wasn't going to be the right person was even before he got nominated. When he got selected at the UDP rally and when he was introduced as the leader, and this was the time that Dabo was in, 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 in jail, mm -hmm. he was introduced as the leader. And he comes out, um, I think the video, I've seen it not too long ago. Um, you know, it was him who saw that um, yellow um, like thingy and there was some galagalas around and he was being introduced. So mm -hmm. as the new leader, he was told that he was a new leader. He was selected for UDP, right? So 
he comes out and saying that oh so if you as a selected as a leader why are you saying that somebody else is who is no longer in the picture and in jail so because he was not ready for leadership right that should have been a red flag right there if you are giving leadership you come out and take the leadership regardless of who was there before you look at jamai right mm -hmm. jamai came out sonko and jamai sonko was disqualified you put jamai he took on the role mm -hmm. right so you have to be able to accept leadership and take over the role and own it to be able to be a leader and that's why baro is struggling because he really never he just took the opportunity but he knows that he can, he not he's, he's not a good leader and he told us and and his plan was just to do three years and, and leave and go back to his business and his life right but then muduga just like i said we made it about him so he stayed and, and and fired everybody around him just so that he could stay right so unless we start thinking critically about some leadership issues and that was why i brought it up because Sometimes we are too busy in, in, in the noise and, and our, we cannot have a conversation devoid of honesty because then that just equals noise. So we have to address some of these issues that we know that has happened in the past. And if we don't address it and, and we're just struggling, scrambling for power, things will never change because those issues will keep lingering unless they are properly addressed. So I'm not sure if I answered your question. There was a little bit of rambling there, but I just wanted to just give a general overview of my thoughts of leadership and how I see things in Gambia and, Absolutely. Absolutely. and the need for the conversation. Absolutely. So, Brother Sarian. Now, Coach, go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, welcome, Modu. Uh, very, very good uh, discussion, definitely, when it comes to leadership. And it so happened this morning, I had a conversation through uh, WhatsApp audio with Karamba Ture because I saw this video of uh, Jumai and he was talking about the life of the farmer and the difficulties that they go through and all that. So I sent it to Karamba naturally because he is always into farming. Every day he is showing us what he has harvested and, and I know how much interest he has, his, he has, his, has in, in this. And when you talked about the lack of vision or the need for leaders to have it. I listen to the guy and I hope that uh, he is, he would come as advertised. Uh, and I see somebody who has a plan, who has a vision and wants to do right, but of course has to be guided rightly. In the Gambia, you talked about this issue that we have, the jayate, because that's what we do. Mm -hmm. You say something and everybody would make you look like you are a demigod. And now people even run for office without being elected, they call them honorable. Now, even yeah. uh, members of the uh, local councils, the councils or whatever they call them, councils are now honorable. I didn't see that happening when I was in the Gambia. Now everybody is honorable. But do you think too that the lack of nationalism in Gambians is also the reason why we have this poor, this run of poor leadership, not only from the presidents, those that are presidents, but even those that serve in all capacities. Because you talk about the issue that we have where people think of self and more so than what is in the greater good of everybody. Mm -hmm. Would you agree that maybe it is high time that we start nurturing our young people from a very young age, from primary school? Yes to put the interests of the nation ahead of their personal interests because you've never been taught that you know take it in your yeah. you come home mm -hmm. you have a car we do not care where it comes from right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i went to school the same we went to school with you maybe have better grades i don't have it key take you right so meaning that your self-advancement is put ahead of the national advancement so mm -hmm. would this be key on these leadership problems that we've had by at least nurturing the next generation of Gambians to put the country ahead of themselves. Yeah, well, yeah, and, 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 and I think that's why I gave the, the, the reason of the new STEM teaching, where mm -hmm. because we have to 
start creating a path to leadership. And it, it has to start from a very young age and you have to instill that in kids. And for me, that's why I focus when it comes to writing, I decided to write a book for, for, for children because when it was just, I was like, okay, this makes sense. So let me do it for children because I think our generation is already a foregone conclusion because everybody is already, um, you know, in their own ways and, and you know, dating, so to speak, you know, so it's hard to, to maybe change and for some because finger japa yang japa. So it is easier to mold children as they grow up. And and that's where education comes in. Right now in Gambia, the only thing that matters, right? My wahi politics, entertainment, and all these other things that are not going to advance the society, right? Where nobody is talking about education, nobody is talking about agriculture, nobody is talking about innovation. Right, so we are, we now live in this in this digital world, right? Every um, so we all have this digital citizenship that we use to express our views, right? Everything I need, any information, is right here on the palm of my hands on on my phone, right? So education now has has changed. It's almost like you can be educated in real time, right? The, the days of memorizing facts are now gone and not even necessary because every fact that I need, I have right here, right? I can just Google anything. I can just go to some website or some video. Things are happening in real time. So before, you know, things happen and then you wait for the newspaper and then you're wondering whether, you know, it has been, um, you know, altered or not. But now if, if Baro is giving a speech in Gambia, I am here, I can listen to the speech right in real time and know exactly what happened, right? So we are learning in real time. So education has to change. So Motama, and we have to try to explore those those ideas and, and try to mold the next generation. And that's where vision comes from, right? Baros government is not thinking about the next generation. They're just thinking about how they want to win the next election, right? In, in 2013, I went to, to, to Oslo, Norway, and I was having a conversation with, um, Yamajaita's daughter's husband. He was maybe around 20 something, early 20s. And I think the dad either works for the Norwegian government or the uncle or something. And we're having this conversation because the Mafa in 2013, they were starting building high rises and stuff. So they were building like a real downtown because Norway has always, um, they have the money, but then they were, so now they were getting into really building infrastructure, nice downtown. So he told me that they, Norway, Norway has a 50 year development, 50 years development um, in, in, the, in the pipeline. So in the next 50 years, right? That development will take place, right? Regardless of the change of government. So that's what leadership is, that's what vision is, right? Because 50 years, Gambia, we don't even have a, a, a five year plan, right? We only have the next election plan and that plan is just how to win it and stay in power or how to get into office. So unless we start thinking long-term, because the short term, not much can happen. So we have to start thinking long-term. And I think we need leaders that are going to have that vision and, and, and think about it and, and see how we can set um, you know, our sights, not for tomorrow or day after, but for the next 10, 15 years, because we have no plans for, 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 for the next or 10, 15 years. Yeah, so uh, you're right, because there is something that you you said, the, the Jayate, because the leadership is one thing, but the education, the political education of the of our people too is another. And uh, it's not only unique to us, because you've seen even the United States here. Yeah. Uh, if you have people like Donald Trump being treated like a demigod mm -hmm. by, by, by some people to the extent that they would, in fact, be scared to say anything against him for fear of losing their seats. Uh, uh, Musa Jeng's girlfriend, Marjorie Green, or whatever that guy, that lady's name is, the crazy one, <laughs> you know. Uh, and then you have people like the Bobbits, and but America can afford that. They can yeah, afford yeah. craziness because they've built institutions that will be able to resist that. We have not. Yes, yes. I remember when Barrow came in, I was just reviewing something that I wrote seven years ago. I'm not even going to get into it. Madi Jobate started calling him servant in chief. And Madi was hounded, attacked, and insulted because they felt that he was disrespecting. Disrespect, yeah. yeah. Baro. 
So the psycho fancy took hold. Took hold, yeah. We started clapping for him. And then all of a sudden, he became bigger than what we expected he was going to become. Mm -hmm. And now we are going, going back to uh, ground zero. But do you think, too, that as we nurture leaders, we should also politically educate our people so that they would also understand their importance as to we are the people who appoint these people to leadership right, so they right. cannot be any greater than us. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, that's like you rightly pointed. America has institutions and they can afford. America is, is much, much older than Gambia. They've been building, building. So it's not gonna just going to go come crashing down that easily, even regardless of Donald Trump's, you know, ridiculous behavior right and, and the cycle of like cycle of fancy but gambia is a different we're still developing we're still building our education system is still weak right because america has people uh the government doesn't really do much most of the innovation and research and everything is done by universities right and the government sponsored these universities to do it and then they do their research and then they bring it to so this is how they adopt their new policies and all that so they have the depth, they have the resources, and we don't. So politically, we still, we, I mean, we used to take civics and stuff, but they were just informing us about the, the positions in the government and blah, blah, blah. But it was, I don't think it was political education, mm -hmm. right? They were just informing us about, you know, certain things. So they were not educating us about the love for country, right? If you see a Nigerian. If, it, if you're a third generation Nigerian anywhere in the world, you claim that you are Nigerian, mm -hmm. right? Now, what do Gambians do? We don't even want our kids speaking our language, right? We go, oh, mom like us in Togai. So we are pulling our kids away from our culture. So unless we become more proud as Gambians, regardless of our our economic situation, I'm not the guy you're poor Gambia, but they are proud to say that they are from there. Right, so it there has to be this this love for nation, right? Instead of self. So I think it's ninu de yare because they they pit us against each other. You know, dagawara tekifi holal samoromili. So in competition, but they start at a very young age, and then so they daga juga si household bo have the days domi by and domi by you do Then I mean it's a disaster, right? Because we are always at each other. So you bring their collaborate. And it is collaboration that that moves society. So, said if it come you, these tech companies, they are in direct competition with each other, but they do collaborate, right? So they may Google or some they may you know, in the manga, in, I'll see that okay, you know, you collaborate. I see the, all their apps together there. I can from there choose the Malakobuga send to WhatsApp, the Malakobuga email. That's collaboration, and they are in direct competition. So you can collaborate and still have your economic economic um you know benefit and a new society so unless we start teaching our children about politics and, and that the least leaders are, are working for us um if i go to work my boss doesn't call me honorable they are the, and they're paying me right i'm working for them so they make sure that i do my job and we need to make sure that they do their job instead of singing and dancing behind them and i think we need to teach kids at a very young age that this is what needs to be happening. This is what leadership means. And this is your role as a, as a citizen to hold leaders accountable. Because if they come and they say they're going to do X, Y, Z, and we could even start practicing that in the classrooms, right? Because you, you put them, you put them like I was saying, STEM, now they are, they are teaching in, in real life situations. You know, we could start modeling these types of teaching in, 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 in schools. You know, you put things together in a political setting and have them campaign somebody will say election and they say they're going to do this and do that and then you see if they're going to do it and then people start challenging them and holding them responsible so there are ways out there but we are too busy with just focusing on self and, and not really focusing on on the next generation and i think if we don't start doing that sooner than later um we're just going to keep falling behind and then they just noise Brother Sarian, sailor. Uh, yes. Hey, Bundo, thank you very much uh, for coming on the show today. Uh, you're, you're, welcome, talking about, you're talking about leadership, and, uh, and, and there was a lot of, you know, things in between. 
Yeah. But, but, but from my position, I think a leader, you know, needs to understand our goals and our purpose, whether it be a president, be a CEO or a director of a company. Yeah. So, so if you're re referencing, for instance, our country as a president, what is the purpose? What is the goal and what are the objectives of why you occupy that office? Also, the leader must also understand clearly their decision, if it's inconsistent with our goals and our purpose, then it's a conflict. Then, you know, the masses will start misunderstanding him. You know, I know you made a reference about borrowing. Yes, all of us sitting here had high hopes by 2016 because of the leadership that we had to deal with for 22 years and we had transition. Hopes were high, a lot of expectation, but the fact that there was, there was as again, the delivery and the expectation was not in par with our goals and aspirations. For example, we still have poor healthcare. We have poor energy infrastructure, high commodity, rampant corruption. So, so, so how, do you, how do you dissect these two parallels in terms of leadership? So um, just let's let's you just mentioned Barrow and high hopes, right? There was really no high. The only hope was to get Yaya Jame out and Barrow stay for three years. Nobody was asking Barrow to come and give us healthcare and give us all this, right? So the purpose for, for Barrow was basically Barrow was the tool that we were used, going to use to to change our leadership, which was Yaya Jame that we're having to deal with and all the mayhem he caused in Gambia. Right, so that was so. Barrow was not there um, to to start building stuff or, or, or give us healthcare or all that. We we're just supposed to transition, right? So again, it comes to greed and personal, uh, you know, leadership being about you. That's that's how everything fell apart, right? Because we see it as as something for self enhancement. Right, so if we had stuck to the plan, maybe today we'll be talking. We will be having a different conversation. The trajectory might have been different by now, right? So I, I think with, with that by report, and even for CEOs, like here, people, uh, companies hire leadership coaches all the time to come to jobs and talk to people and inspire them, inspire CEOs. CEOs are not just sitting; they are enhancing themselves to become better leaders by hiring coaches that come and tell them, hey, this is how you need to run your company, this is how you need to treat your people. And things are changing every day because now information, everything, we are moving at this lightning speed because we are all interconnected and have our digital citizenship that, that, that we're using to, to, to share our views of, about anything. Like people in Gambia, something happens in America, they're sharing their views. Uh, so we all have that digital citizenship to be able to chime into everything. So unless we start um, forcing our leaders, right, and, and, and by being honest. And uh, so this, this personal thing, personal interest, is what's causing the dishonesty. That's why I think people take it so personal if you, if you challenge their leadership, because it's about them. So they think that you're taking money out of their pocket, Bugulo and Uteki, so that's why they insult you. That's why they take it so personal, because they've made it about them. So unless we start thinking about us, so instead of, um, it's more like personal good instead of common good. So it's the mindset. So, and I think the mind, you can only change mindset for the next generation. It's going to be hard to change the mindset now. I mean, because people, even sometimes people, even if they're convinced, they're not used to taking the truth, they will still deny it because they feel that that truth doesn't interest them because of their mindset. So this leadership thing, I'm not saying it for now because it's going to be hard for now based on our way of thinking and the resources we have and maybe the effort that we we'll, might we'll be willing to, to, to invest in. Right? So I think we need to be looking at the next generation and whatever leadership we have or whoever is vying for office, 
need to start thinking about that. We need to start focusing because, like I said, I think right now it's a foregone conclusion for for our generation. So we we are trying to <coughs> make the ground fertile for the next generation, and that's where we need to start shifting our focus on by having these long term goals and, and and about leadership and and bringing people also that that will teach kids about leadership. Leadership coaches are everywhere now. Thinking about leadership coaches, having empathy for the people, having a vision and inspiring people that are behind upon you to, like if I go to work right now and my boss says, oh, I, you know, I give you this project, you know, go ahead and do it and then I do it and then they reward me, inspire me, you can do it, come to me if you have any questions, I'm here. I get inspired by that, right? I'll go, 10 miles over the, 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 the limit to try to, to, to inspire because they've shown me that I have ownership in this and they trust me. So that's inspirational. And, and leaders have to start bringing, doing that in Gambia and, and Africa for that matter to show our people that, hey, we can, we can do this everywhere else. Israel is so small right now, right? But they have power and they have influence because of unity. Right? And we seek power to suppress each other instead of to 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 unite and then you know preserve our dignity. America is seeking economic power; they have economic power. China is seeking economic power. India, technological power. But what are we doing? Individual power, just to suppress each other. So we have to, and that's the mindset that that needs to change. And leadership has a lot to do with that by guiding us the right way. And we as a people also need to be hiring people or electing people that we think are here to represent everybody else, regardless of your ethnicity, your political affiliation, you name it, your gender, whatever. So that is when progress is going to start, we're gonna start seeing progress. Dr. Sleiman Ba, I know, I mean, um, <laughs> you're here to talk about but I gotta, the, uh, I gotta the, ask my second. Oh, question. sorry, 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 sorry. Excuse me. I'm really, I'm really sorry. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. All right. <laughs> I, lost, I lost track. All right. Well, well no, thank you very much. Uh, you know, sometimes I think about it, uh, and I think this whole issue in a larger context. You mentioned Jaura before. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this problem has been there even before Baro comes in for three years. But, yeah, but, yeah. but I think I think I think one thing that we need to realize, and I, and and I don't think we need to pass the torch to the next generation. I think we have to have the backbone and the willingness to speak in unequivocal terms, right? So so they, as a leader, there is great expectation. The great expectation is. First of all, self-awareness. You have to be in tune of the issues and challenges that you need to deal with. So, for example, when they came in, they handpicked some folks that they recruited. I would particular point to Social Security, for example. There was an issue of Social Security. It was a Jamme personal checking account. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There was issue, but they got someone who has the technical know-how, who had the experience, came out there and turn things around from red to green. Mm -hmm. Now he changed the dynamics, the modus operandi of how that institution was built and its function. Mm -hmm. Being part of that government, meaning don't make it a personal checkbook, it's people's retirement are going in this. And the purpose of it is it's to serve people in terms of subsidized housing and all that stuff. So the man started changing. Mm -hmm. But the people that work under him don't like the change. They were resistant to it. And what did they do? They went out to the leadership, and the leadership finally kicked him out. Kick him out, yeah, yeah. So, so, so I think, I think, I think, I think if we can talk about this is the but, but, but when Barrow was being elected, everyone, including the voters, knew the problems were there. We knew the problems firsthand. Were there the challenges were there? The expectation was at least the goodwill, we will train in a different direction, but that hasn't happened. 
So now I think we come to the servant leadership. The servant leadership is about selflessness. See yourself as service to the people that you lead. And this concept has even changed in IT, this in, in project management, I mean, like this whole management style has shifted. Mm -hmm. You work, you collaborate with people, you take feedback and walk your way up in order to get meaningful results. That's what's locking. And, and, and the conversation needs to stem up. Now, how do we reset that trajectory moving forward? How do we make sure that the leaders align themselves with the issues that we have and be able to tackle them head on while we hold them accountable? Yeah, yeah but I, again, that's what I'm saying. It, it, it comes down to vetting our leaders because that's why we just go for the most popular or the Yamane leader and then we put them out there, right? So unless we start vetting, we know our issues, right? But the problem with Gambia is because of, the tone set by set by leadership, like you just mentioned social security. Because when Jame was there, Jame being the leader he is, it was always about Jame. He said he had this vision 22, but he had a pocket vision and that, that, that pocket was his, right? So because things were, he used it as a checking account and everybody else was benefiting from that corruption. So if you bring somebody to try to clean it up, they will fight you and make sure that you are not there because it was about them. You know, they were sending them to Mecca, they were giving them Tobaski money and buying them ramps and all this from people's retirement, right? So we have this culture of fu harbi neka, I mean, fu taka harbi, fu fu laleke, right? And, and that is the mindset that is really crippling Gambia because, so again, that's why I said the next generation, because even if you change the leadership, Right. Sometimes you bring them in. People that are there will fight you to the nail. I mean, we've had stories of people coming into a new job to try to shake things around. And then before you know it, there's Nassau all over the place. You know, you come to your chair, they put some some eggs over there. You know, what I mean, and all this rubbish to try to intimidate you so that you leave because they are used to just feasting, um, you know, the, the public feasting with the public funds. So the mindset has to change, not just to, about the leader. It's about us. That's why I said that our people who are governing us don't know how to govern us and we do not know how to be governed. So that's why for me, my focus is the next generation. And we have we are the ones that are going to be the sacrificial lamb to do all the work and prepare the next generation because that's what happens in every place else in the world, right? A generation will sacrifice for the next one. So we have to come out together as a people and stop all these different kabudus and groups and all these people trying to seek power to oppress others and think about our collective dignity as a people, right? We've been colonized, right? So this divide and conquer worked, right? That's how they colonized us. So that divide and conquer mentality still lingers and we are using it to, to divide and conquer ourselves. You know, whether it's political lines or tribal lines or regional lines, you know, whatever. So every Gambian identifies themselves, not just a Gambian, but, oh, I'm a Gambian, I'm NPP or I'm, I'm, I'm PPP or I'm UDP. I'm this. So politics has become almost like an identity. Maybe we should start putting it on our ID cards because it's just politics is just a process to move a nation. It's not some type of identity, but we have made it an identity and made it and personalize it. And that's why we cannot even have a conversation because every time I challenge your view, you think that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to basically stop you from being tacky, right? If I challenge you say, oh, you know, kid of my head or they hate me, I'm just challenging your policy and your views as a political entity. It has nothing to do with you personally. Anything mm -hmm. I say about any official in Gambia has nothing to do with their personal lives. I just talk about their, capacity as uh, as as an officer or as a you know ceo or whatever serving the public but people don't see it that way because we personalize everything um instead of looking at uh things from a from the actual political lens we look at the personal lens so th that's the issue we have so that's why i keep focusing on the next generation because that's where the real change is going to happen and we need to prepare the ground 
now for them. Let's do all the heavy lifting um, to prepare the next generation. Because if not, we would not stand a chance because things are moving at a, at a, at a lightning speed right now in this world. We are all interconnected and information is right. Things are changing. Look at technology, right? Now we're just sitting here and, and talking to each other. The past 20, 30 years, this wouldn't happen, right? I could be in Gambia. People used to be in Gambia, Manmanyo, America. They're wondering, oh, how does America look like? I'm, I'm working on, on, on glass or whatever. Now I can just come and then call them Mangini, Exina, Philadeka, and show them my place. And I could be seeing them in Bundung or wherever they live. So life has changed and we have to change. And it's so quick and we really way behind. So if we don't start preparing the next generation, we're really going to have some fundamental issues. Thank you. Go ahead, Musa. So, Bubakar, <clears throat> I mean, uh, Suleiman, <laughs> Dr. Ba, um, again, we are going to be talking about the $40 million question in a little bit, but we uh, also believe that the leadership issue is vital. And I'm, and I'm, you've heard all the conversation and the questions and the commentary. What's your take, Dr. Ba? Well, I. <laughs> I guess my take would be a repetition of uh, what has already been said, but notwithstanding, mm -hmm. um, let's let's look at the Gambia um, as a country or as a society. Um, we have leadership by lineage, and what do I mean by that? Now, in my village, I have two more brothers. And I pray for them to live longer. But after them, I should be the black head, the Alcalo. Mm -hmm. Right? So, but who am I to be the leader of a village? Do I have the qualities? Do I have the attributes? Can I really listen to the entire village? Would I be able to bring in innovative ideas in, in advancing the village? forward now these are fundamental questions many a times um we then we don't tend to ask and provide answers for so long you are the um eldest or by virtue of your um lineage you are next next in line you're okay to become the leader but can you be a good leader or a better leader now, in a country as a whole, it cannot work like that. Leadership in this day and age, one must be prepared for it. And one must have clarity of why you want to lead and what you are going to lead. That is fundamental. But coach will agree with me. At Doi, you would always say um, we don't put much emphasis on leadership, but a movement, a movement in a movement, everybody is a leader because everybody is expected to understand the overarching objectives and the vision of the organization. So in case Coach Pastor Majao is no longer there, Suleiman would know where to take it from. Precisely the recent past Senegalese election was the case. So in this day and age, one must be prepared to understand that leading a country, you're not just leading a society in isolation but a society that is part of a global community and you must understand all the complexities that comes with modern day economics modern day politics to put your country at a strong foothold so you can do that in many ways participating, reading, traveling, but you must not be a lazy mind in this day and age to lead a successful 
society or a country. That is where I'm going to stop. Huh? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I wanna, I wanna, I wanna. I've listened to everybody, and the more I listen, the more I get a little bit confused. And that is business management 101. They would say leadership is all about getting things done through other people. Suleiman said something about, in our situation, looking at 2026, we've been independent for the past 59 years, or is it 58? Mm -hmm. Gambia is still poor. Most Gambians would tell you, we are in this situation because of a leadership crisis. In other words, people are thinking, it's going to take a leader to take us out of this. So looking at 2026, Mumodundao and Dr. Barr, what are the attributes that we believe that this person must possess to be able to inspire and transform this country? In other words, are we as a country, culturally, is our culture even in tandem, like the way we choose our leaders? Is it this whole democratic process, like elections, go in and vote? Is that the best way to elect leaders? And also, what do we want what attributes does this particular leader should possess in order to get us out of this Guta Gilegineka? Most people would tell you, let's say, for instance, um, Pastel. People believe they came in a situation and they are able to somehow inspire a good chunk of Senegalese to convince them and say, this is the path that we want to take you. What is there that they have attributes that they are able to do that? In our situation, Mamadunda, what do you think we should be looking for, for that person to have, to be able to take us out of this Guta and transform this country? Um, yeah, that's an interesting question, Musa. Um, you know, like I said, um, the way we have viewed leadership in Gambia has made it very difficult for us to be able to like, really identify, um, because everybody that's out there is out there because buga and your name has been thrown out there and then your tamganyo you have whoever is following you and and basically trying to uh, champion um for your leadership um but we and i think also honesty it's 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 what's lacking in how we choose leaders um so unless we really start um, as a people you know, because 2026, I think, you know, it's it's just, what, two years away? Is it enough for us to to be able to vet people properly? Because people have already been put out there, you know? Uh, I don't know who is gonna emerge from the, from the nowhere and just show up, because sometimes uh, that does happen. A good leader could just just emerge from nowhere and then, and then shows up, right? So, um, I think as far as what I've seen, um, because leadership, is, le there's, leader is one thing, but a good leader is a totally different thing. We are always going to have leaders, but mm -hmm. we, we want more than leaders. We want good leaders that are going to have a vision, right? And I think for me, Gambia right now, because there's so much push and pull and there's so much toxicity in, in, in our this politics, um, the only thing I see is unity, because if, if, if we unite, then, then that, that takes out the fear of, of whoever had this fear, and oh, Sunni Jile over, they're going to trample on me, or if this wins again, they're going to trample on me. So unless we come together and then unite, and we have to start it early, we can't wait till the very last minute. And let, let, me, me, ask let, me, let me let me just let me just because I want to come back to that those attributes those yeah. qualities that the person that that we would want to see from that person that we believe could yeah. really transform our country even looking at 2026. Yeah. Now the only template that we have we have Jawara. There yeah. are certain attributes that he had. We have Jammi also. There are certain attributes that he had, and some can agree or disagree in terms mm -hmm. of those aggress. I mean, uh, those attributes whether make them good leaders. They also have attributes that made them bad leaders. And then we also have the current president as well. And mm -hmm. we are also looking at a lot of leaders waiting in the, for instance, you have the United Democratic Party leader. Yeah. You have Khalifa Salah as a leader. So in other words, if we look at these individuals 
and we've, we've gotten to know them. What are some of those attributes that we can glean from them and say, aha, because there are things that Jawara had, there are things that Jami had, there are things that the current president has. Yeah. So if you could kind of zero into that, those attributes. Yeah, that I and, and like, like, I, yeah like I said, the attributes are somebody that has a vision, somebody vision. that's got, yeah, vision. I mean, they all have visions, though. I mean, you can yeah, agree but, but, or disagree with the vision. Yeah. When we talk about, like I said, vision is not just for, for, for next week or for the week after. Like like mm -hmm. I said, if Jawara had vision, Gambia should have been at another level because 30 years, Kagami took over by 20, he had a vision. In 20 years, Rwanda was transformed. Right? Jawara had 30 because, and, and really nothing much happened because he didn't have a vision. He was just there. As somebody new, you know, Lamba Dajfi, Lamba Dajfile, and and try to just evolve, right? And 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 try to do his best. Uh, he was he was very democratic. I mean, you know, the coup happened, but that's and um, and then things in Japanese and but that's in every country, right? If if something happens, something of violence, the government needs to come out and and try to squash it. But vision is number one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, somebody that inspires others. Mm -hmm. Right, it is a it's a very critical component of leadership. So you make the leadership about the people, not about you, and watch the people now rise up to the occasion, because people want ownership. Right, man, man, they argue, man, it's not Gambia, so forget they want everybody. You know, the man had in Senegal, right? Mm -hmm. You build, you build, you build the capital, and then get Delusi. Guess what? So in Delusi, then you are hard here. Because there was no ownership. We were not part of the building process. We were not inspired to build the country. Then you could find because of the mindset. So unless there's that ownership, right? And you give people ownership by making them part of the process, making them feel important, making them feel valued, right? Get away. I don't want it, right? Because I don't want it to be about me i want it to be about them yeah. that's what inspires people mm -hmm. right so we need somebody that is going to inspire others by making this project about them right you unify people call them you know we all know the different groups and the different factors call them unite them and say hey be a mediator and say hey this is about us as a people you can give examples of other people that have united and are achieving goals as an example right mm -hmm. we are the same people we are so interconnected regardless of our ethnic group right like man i am mixed with fula Sere, balanta i don't even know what else right i'm mm -hmm. gonna jokingly claim the Sere because that's the thing but i really don't care about so that doesn't define me as an individual my mm -hmm. experiences in life is mm -hmm. what defines me because it's not about the Gambia La or you know Sere Lafi Osmayali Osma Papala. It's about me and how I evolve because Purman Lolu and that identity, that that self-awareness. Right. Moma the the person that I am today. So I'm not hung up on 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 what ethnicity I belong or the Gurla and the Jigen La. Right. So we need somebody that's going to inspire people by making it about them. Somebody mm -hmm. that has a vision, right? And you share your vision with the thing, with the people, and say, hey, we are one people. This is the, the, vision, of the vision of the country. You have to have a plan, right? You can be there and even put a 50 year old, 50 year plan going out and do your five years or 10 years and get out. Awesome, right? yeah. Because people are inspired. They're going to come out, just like the example I gave in, uh, in Norway. Because of the mindset of the Norwegian people, regardless of what new government comes in, those projects are going to keep going for the next 50 years. Correct. Right? So we have to have somebody that, that has that, and you have empathy. Mm -hmm. empathy. Right? You know the people, and you feel their pain. Right? Like, if Barrow has empathy, they been delayed that when the moon of them admit at victims, it didn't have to be like eight years down the line. Mm -hmm. Understand? So that mm -hmm. just shows you that the leadership quality is lacking. It's lacking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the empathy wasn't there, right? Mm -hmm. 
So mm -hmm. and then but everybody doing it on Balafa, Baro Balaba. So I'm on Balafa, and you condemn me at Lufini Buyaga. So there's no Balafa there. Correct. Right? So we have mm -hmm. to have people that are there for the country, not for themselves. Right? Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and and you are not there just to win elections, but you are there to move the society. Because just building roads and stuff, those people, and right now we build Talibini, but do we even have a maintenance plan in place? Correct. Do my dear Jaga can do Kowa? You can get your Talibi, bla bla. Oh, I see. Bugini di nyodi parasi. Na kablen sa defa gun kosi Talibi. Yeah. So what is the what is the maintenance plan going out? Do we have any? Now they could build no no right. So if you touch any new pipe, no no, and that's it. So that's what I'm saying. The vision when we put infrastructures. You put a plan to maintain it because if it's going to be there, let's say for the next 25, 30 years, there has to be a maintenance plan for the next 25. That's what I call vision, right? So we have to have somebody that's going to unify us, right? That is not there for their party, but there for Gambians. I mean, people win elections through party or if you join or become an independent or whatever, but it is not about about that party or about that group that helped you. It's about the nation, right? Because you can be a leader, but do you just want to be a leader or do you want to be a successful leader? Effective leader. Effective leader, right? Mm -hmm. Anybody can do Jame was a leader, you know what I mean? But poor man, Tali Yum Defantuni, was it worth Nit Nimray and was it worth unraveling the fabric of our society, Ben Yumeling Mel right now, because there is this trauma is going to haunt us. That's why man, I'm focusing on the next generation. Because the trauma that Jamel left is what's causing all this commotion. Because that trauma has to flush itself out. Right? Because we always denied that other people were killing Gambians. Because yeah. we didn't we were capable of doing it, but Jame made us, he brought out that in us, right? So that's what I'm saying. It's about people and what you bring out in them. It could be negative, it could be positive. So if he had chosen to bring out the best in us, Gambia would have been in another place, but he made it about him and then was using others to bring out the evil in Gambians and you started the, you start the rayon thing. So mm -hmm. you inspire one and bring the, the ingen ingenuity in us, the innovativeness in us, and all these things, Gambia would happen on another level. So that's what I'm saying. We need a leader that's going to bring all the good attributes in, right. in, 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 in us to make us uh, move to the next generation and, and, and build the country and have this, 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 this vision. Yeah. Um, Pop Samba. I'm not that civilized, so I sometimes will put my uh, thing on mute. <laughs> well, combo, Eric, bro. <laughs> hey, I'll take combo anytime. That's why everybody is running from my right. to the combos. But uh, there is something that Musa said. That what did he say? Business administration 101 or whatever. <laughs> you, know, you, say, you know, success through through other people. That that would. At least require that you have at least some idea and some vision. Like get things done through other people. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, you do it, do it through other people, but at least know exactly what you want to achieve. But if you do, if you like the vision, it doesn't matter. You can hire everybody in the world; it will not amount to anything. Mm -hmm. But here is the thing about leadership. Let's look at the current issues that are affecting our country. Recently, the government of President Arama Baro has decided that they were going to earmark forty million Gambian dollars and uh, to give it to seven media houses that would promote the agenda of the government through infomercials or whatever that they, that they call it. Now, there are two things to this. There is the ethical part of it, journalistic. I know, Suleiman, that's your field. You are the expert on that. But the other issue is the fairness of it. And even the ne whether it is absolutely necessary to do that. Mr. Da, what is your opinion of this whole $40 million here? Uh, <laughs> if, before I come to Suleiman, to, at least Suleiman can deal with the ethical part of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody knows that it's unethical. That's, that's, just, that's just a given, right? And, and what is this agenda that, 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 that the government wants them to, 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 to push on their behalf? 
right? I mean, you have GRTS, you have all these other outlets that are there for the government. Why do you need to spend private money given our situation and the struggles we face, right? So that's what it, it's, it's all, it, again, it comes back to the leadership being about them, right? Not about the people and the public because look at our hospitals, education, agriculture, none of this, that 40 million could have gone, I mean, could have done wonders for any of these sectors, but it is always about them and how they are going to win the election and stay for another five years and do the same thing. So there is, Furman, again, it's about lack of vision because anybody that has a vision will not take $40 million, I mean, $40 million is to put it into that when you have all these other outlets. Just do your work, work on your projects. People, Gambians will see the good work that you're doing, right? You don't need to be paying media houses $40 million to, and, and what is this agenda, right? It's been eight years. What has really changed? The, the, um, people are crying every day. Uh, crime is up, drugs everywhere. Um, you know, we're not really doing anything to address those issues, right? But we are using money but so that you want to stay and then those issues are going to continue, right? So this $40 million could have been, dialysis could have been used to, to solve the drug problems that we have, to solve the education problems that we have. So it is just totally unethical and very unnecessary and total waste of taxpayers' money. And and this is the issue. It has been the issue over and over again. And I don't know what the thinking was behind it, but now that it's out, I hope they will come and explain their, their situation. And the explanations, Yumadega, really, they're not valid at all. So I don't know why the need. So Purman, it, it's just mind boggling. I mean, I was just shot like everybody else was. So sometimes some of these things happen and you you cannot even process it, let alone explain the rationale of it, right? So, my, and I think for me, I was just having a hard time processing it, giving the situation that we're in, like, why do you need to do this? Like, so that's, again, it's the lack of empathy and, and the lack of vision and, and all this all bundled into one. So put my, it was just ridiculous. So, and I don't think I can, because I'm still processing it to, to see, to understand why would anybody do this so it's it's hard for me to even try to properly explain it because i'm i'm still processing it i know it's ridiculous but just trying to break it down and because sometimes some of these things takes takes time uh to really process and 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 really because it's so mind-boggling that it, it it catches you off guard so <coughs> i can say about that 40 million maybe uh bakar bakan can 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 you know explore it more because he's in that line of work and and can explore the unethicalness of it, which we already know, anyways. But just just the the, the ramifications of such decision. Sulaiman, Doctor Sulaiman, what do we need to in the interest of time? Yeah. We ask the question. Both of you can just chime in. Yeah. Because you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just going to quickly come in because I should also go and, and pick up my daughter somewhere. Um, I I disagree um, to say that it's unethical um, giving funds to the private media. I understand there is a concern that it may be unethical, but as it stands, there is no justification that it is unethical particularly on the side of the media now i i don't want to say much on the side of the government as if i'll be defending the government so my position on this issue has always been what we should do is to encourage the media particularly the beneficiaries foster responsible journalism. Now, what we must bear in mind is the historical context of the Gambia's media landscape and the structure of journalism in that country. 
from the beginning well let's say from Germany to now let's remind ourselves that Germany has always had three ways of censorship you would have direct censorship through the application of laws control of the state broadcaster in particular sorry I, I, i'm hearing some kind of a noise i don't know where it is you two are, you're hearing it or yeah it was a bit of a distraction huh go ahead i was hearing it, it looks like it has stopped all oh. right okay so these three ways are through the direct control of the media legally and also financially second way is through parastate actors police assaulting journalists particularly members of the private media thirdly was awarding of adverts to the media almost maybe except for oya but it is it was quite often that when you have july 22nd celebrations coming up the whole front page of jamis picture would be there on the front page that itself is a state capture of the media to legitimize the coup and everything he has done along the way so interestingly when they're okay they open up the media landscape instead of the state having dominance particularly with the broadcast media competitors emerge the q tvs the paradise tvs the star tvs liberalizing particularly the the the, the broadcast sector because that was the sector that the state mainly controlled to monopolize information the radio industry was never a problem to the the, the jammy government except <laughs> when you had station like um citizen fm and lately Teranga FM. But again, we know what happened to them. So the rest of the radio stations are mainly entertainment stations, commercials, sports, um, talking about community sensitizations, nothing like what is happening now. So what happened with this 40 million is a departure from what gambling used to do having invest on grts and the daily observer to now and then also this also coincide with times and circumstances we're in the digital age so the legacy media do no longer strongly control the narrative so what Barrow or his government did right now to give 40 million to the private media that we are strangulated and we're never having any sort of a financial assistance, particularly on the Jamis rule. And they are not to even run or be critical against the government to give them some money now it is left to them particularly beneficiaries how are they going to utilize the funds when those funds are tied to particular terms and conditions and those terms and conditions must not be to undermine the cardinal principles of journalism and the reason why I said at the moment is on ethical um, is I have no evidence of saying 
um, is unethical on the side of the media to accept the funds is because the argument that it undermines independent journalism, that concept is just, it's elusive. How do you ascertain that a particular media is independent? And that is because media houses always carry a particular ideological leaning by virtue of its ownership or its financiers. If I want to establish whether a particular media house is independent or biased right now, I would do a mapping. Now, what that mapping means is go on their website, for instance, have all the categories of their coverage. For instance, politics. Go on um, Terpatu as an example. Type UDP, Hussein Udawo. You would see the number of interviews he has granted to Kerfato in a year. Go to the standard. Type UDP, Hussein Udawo. You would see the number, do similar thing to Foroya. Then you would realize how much of coverage a particular media house is given to a particular political party. Then you begin to draw the lines. So why not orders? Are they not giving fair and balanced coverage to others? And that is where you now establish most likely the ideological leaning of a particular newspaper and determine whether they are truly independent to the values of journalism or not. Since these funds, when this news broke out, one of the beneficiaries, uh, the Fatu Network, go on there now and type anything related to the government and the NPP. So you'll be able to determine whether truly speaking the publication has negated its watchdog role because they have received five million dollars and if you have that evidence and you talk, you 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 argue that it's unethical since you've received this amount of money this is what has happened I would accept that. But as it stands, yes, it is taxpayers' money. It should not be distributed willy-nilly. And I believe they did not do it so. They've probably done their own mapping, draw their communication strategy out of that, and decided that these are the media houses that are going to be the beneficiaries. We do not want to give the funds to other media houses that, in fact, is going to help them to undermine us. That's natural for every government to think and act in that way. But like I said, I'm not speaking for them. So, there were a lot of reactions. And I will tell you why my position is the way it is now. I have a serious concern about much censorship in the Gambia that is growing its ugly tail in the country. We have moved or moved from state censorship. We have still some elements of parastate censorship, the police assaulting journalists. But one of the worst forms of censorship happening right now is much censorship, particularly online, insulting journalists, attacking journalists be misogynistic against them. If we are condemning them because they have received 40 million, we must be very careful in doing so. And that is where I also have a concern about the way the Gambia Press Union reacted on this whole issue. In my view, they should have 
first consulted their colleagues, remind them about the code they have in there, they call it the Jalo Charter. News has broke out that you have received this particular amount of money from the government, and we are concerned that by virtue of this financial aid, we think you are likely going to undermine the ethical principle of journalism. You may not be able to carry out your watchdog role. It is your right, we have no powers, and it is not illegal for you to advertise for the government. But there are ethical concerns. To understand the real issues, and if there is a situation of breach of the code, then the GPU, through the, I think they now have a media council, can forward the matter there. But condemning it outright is an invitation, an open invitation of a mob against the journalist. The very issues that you are running away from you will not be endangering the lives of journalists in that country. You can see it all over the media. Particularly on Facebook, harassing them, insulting them, being misogynistic. These are my main concerns. It's not illegal to receive funding from the government to do advertorials. Is it unethical? The manner in which they have done, there are concerns. You can call it select, being selective, discriminatory. Yes, the constitution said you cannot discriminate others and all that. But on the side of the media, you cannot condemn them for accepting a contract to provide a particular service. That's my position. Yeah, so uh, we just wanted to piggyback on, on what Suleiman just said about the unethicalness of it. I think when we're talking about ethics, we're talking about the government because it, it is our money and they're spending it in ways that we don't think it should be spent and it's unethical and it's being spent on a select few medias, right? Instead of, um, you know, if you want to promote, I have $40 million, um, the government, you put it out there that the government is interested and you do not take our taxpayers' money right they're just basically saying the government but it's basically to promote mpp a political party right the government should be for everybody right mpp is for mpp and they have their political agenda or whatever but as a government right it should be a government for the people not for for npp or for any other party and i think that's where for me it is unethical because you take taxpayers money everybody in Gambia is paying taxes. Even those of us who are not there are paying taxes because if, they, if every chicken chain we spend, send and is spent, taxes are being paid on that. So we are directly or indirectly paying taxes, whether we're there or not, based on the money that we're, we're, you know, we're remitting back home. So it is our money that the government is using, right, to promote NPP and giving it to a selected few. For me, that's why it is unethical. And you just talk about it is discriminate, uh, it is discriminating. It is unethical to be discriminated, right? Because you're not treating everybody fairly. So that's unethical from the part of the government. For the media house, they can argue their case, but that's fine. But it is the government that's our concern because they are the ones taking our money to dish it out to others. So for me, it is unethical on the side of the government. Yeah, we can argue about the, the, the media houses and how things work ethically. I'm not a journalist, so I'm not even going to try to speculate much on that. But as far as the government is concerned, this is taxpayers' money that you are using to promote the agenda of a political party. And I think that's wrong and it's unethical. And the fact that they're just using a few selected media houses to give it to them, even make it more so unethical than anything else. Well, I think... Uh... Modu, listen, like for me, like you said, Suleiman, for us to know whether these media houses have changed their editorial policies would depend on what they bring out to the public because mm -hmm. we'll now be watching and all that stuff. But uh, if you look at it, let's see, let me just 
uh, there are two things here. I was reading Foray's editorial because I wanted to know what Foray would have to say. And their first concern was whether this money, this 40 million, was approved by Congress, not Congress, by the National Assembly, so that the government will allocate it to media entities selected by the government. All right? They went on to remind the media houses of Section 207, subsection 3 of the Constitution, which states that the press and other information media shall at all times be free to uphold the principles, provisions, and objectives of this constitution and the responsibility and accountability of the government to the people of the Gambia. Okay. But then it says something close the editorial. And this is where the issue is, where people's concerns are. Because for the most part, yes, there'll be some people that will attack media houses, but most people, their concern is why are we spending 40 million on this? when we have other more pressing issues. You go to GRTS, yes, state media. Even makeup, the makeup that they, they, their people use is a problem, it's not in existence. But the issue that Foray closed the editorial with is, since media houses are paying taxes to the state, the state is duty bound to provide resources without any discrimination mm -hmm. to media houses to enable them to disseminate information to the public. NPP going to a media house and buying ads, that's their right. They can do that because that's NPP's money. UDP doing it, that's their right. DOI doing it, that's their right. But if it is state resources, that comes from the taxpayers, I don't think there are any gray areas here. It is unethical, it is discriminatory, it is unconstitutional. And this is where the issue is. And to me, it's the biggest waste of resource, especially when. Because everything that they say in that press release, why uh, when the permanent secretary was interviewed by Standard, all his arguments, if the government wanted to have information, they can just call people to a, to a press conference. They go. Our journalists do not ask questions. They clap for you anyway, for the most part. So you have, and most of the time, if you look at even our media, the media has become a reproductive I don't know whether that's a word. All they do is reproduce a story of press releases and press statements. Mm -hmm. Government sends them a press release. They don't even turn it into a story. They would they can publish it verbatim. That's it. So you don't need to pay anybody 40 million to sell your agenda. All you need to do is send them a press release. They will read it. They will publish it. They will, so it's all over the place. So to me, it's a waste of money. And there are no gray areas here. It's unethical in any way that you look at it. It's unconstitutional. It's discriminatory. And I don't think it helps in the furtherance of our journalistic uh, standards or even media helping media houses. You cannot give seven people that money. And the defense could be cannot cannot also be you know what but they've done it for other people before no what is wrong is wrong whether people said it then or say it now are two different things there were some of us who were called dss in 2017 because we were saying things about barrow but today those who are not saying anything are saying a lot more about barrow today at the end of the day the issue is whether it is wrong is it said so that's my thing i don't know what your take is on that <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. Ba. No, well, I, well, I, know, uh, I know Musa is itching to come here. I've seen him now fidgeting. <laughs> you, your time will come. Just take. No, but <laughs> all of us. I mean, Mr. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think after Musa, I'll quickly have to leave. Um, but quickly, um, Uncle Jao, uh, you talked about the issue of press releases, and you see. Not many journalists understand how to change a press release to an article, particularly if you are under-resourced. Everybody is talking about they are now undermining the public watchdog role of the media. An under-resourced media house cannot carry out its public watchdog role, and that is why they will just transmit press releases as they come. If you're under resourced, you can't even carry out an investigative report. 
if you don't have insiders at some point the media must be an actor for instance if you want to unveil a story on corruption a reporter has to go in there participate in the act whether it involves giving out money and you tell me how many of these media houses in the gambia can do that if you do not have an insider particularly the private media they cannot so for me my argument is that it is a good thing for the private media to be well resourced appropriately not in discriminatory manners to be able to carry out its professional role in holding a government to account now the accountability principle in journalism is not just the government and people always make emphasis on that the private sector or the parties uh, political parties it should be across the board not just against the government or being critical to the government yeah go ahead good you will be surprised am i um you will be Musa, surprised that i thought it's my turn Musa. <laughs> okay no, 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 you can go ahead I, i'm just I'm laying out you you no, asked the question coach asked it's my turn so i i'm just no, wanna I lay down. I know you, that's how it goes. Way, but go ahead no no you can go ahead no seriously i will not <laughs> I just want, I just for the, for the purpose of uh, having a good conversation, uh, uh, Professor Ba, I want you to kind of sh summarize your answer really quick. I think it's take a little long time and uh, we have to wait. And Musa is kind of losing track of our <laughs> rotation here. So, but, 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 but Dr. Ba, I'll listen to you. I'll listen to you about leadership. And you talk about ethics. And now it seems like you're saying you're not speaking on behalf of the government, but it seems like you're taking a position that this whole issue is ethical. And, and, and I'm going to take an exception to that. Here's the thing. What do you think? Do you really think how the contract was awarded? It's in line because they are saying, even the medias are saying, they've been reached out to and they provide some type of response to government requirement to bid onto a restricted bid, right? I'm not familiar with their research. In fact, I, for the purpose of transparency, I, I requested the GPPA procurement act. That way I can review it because there's two procurement stuff I'm, 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 I'm familiar with, source source or open competition. So source source, as long as the government can justify that these are the only particular entities that can provide such a service to government, which is unique. Open competition, they provide opportunity to all to bid. And there is selection criteria based on their requirements. And there is a scoring system. So now in all that, why, how can you, and, and I, I, I don't want to tie this into other media houses and all that, but what do you think, especially knowing the country's challenges firsthand, priorities that are out there, do you really think it's ethical to spend 40 million to selected seven million, seven, seven media houses, private media houses? Well, from the onset, what I what I did say uh, was that uh, I was speaking on the side of the media. Uh, priority wise, it is obvious that there are many sectors in the Gambia that are in dire need of resources. So us, the private media as well. In the Gambia, almost every sector is a struggling sector. So if you want to work based on priority in the Gambia, it would be difficult to have a starting point. But I got you, the government ought to prioritize on how they spend public resources. 
Yeah. Is that is that your answer? That's it. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I, I mean, I mean, I guess, I guess, my follow up question is: we talk about a lot of you know <laughs> enterprises don't have enough resources, but is it government's business to provide resources to those entities? Because if you do, at least there's a bailout. I understand that if there is natural phenomena or crisis, <laughs> you do a hand up. But, but, but what I'm trying to say is what is justifiable? Talking about all that, that you need to bail out in an open, in a secret manner that some media disclose it, what is the justification? There's a lot, but you selected few, seven, and you gave them five million, and you give some the other media 10.2 million. And, and we stand here and we said it's justified because they lack resources. Is the government is government in business to provide resources to those businesses? And then Syria and this this are this are, this are private, right? This is not public. Um, and and for, for, for public. What about our public hospitals, right? That money, are we going to prioritize health over private media needing funds? Well, these are these are all these are all fundamental human rights. The right to information, the right to health care, the right to education. And the government must be at the center stage to ensure they fulfill the their responsibilities for their citizenry to access these rights. Look, I, you know, my political background is socialism, right? So I wouldn't advocate for the spending of public funds in the private sector. Instead, would be to build public institutions. But what has happened in the past? You have GRTS that enjoyed monopoly, resources at their disposal, but they were still unable to carry out that fundamental tax of responsible journalism in the country. So that is our experience. Now, investing more on GRTs to me is still creating a monopoly of information. So I think you can go yeah. on. Okay. <laughs> I don't have a question. So I have a comment like everybody else. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Okay. And my comment is this. I'm also, like everybody else, I've been looking at this issue, really. And there's the ethical part of it that Suleiman talked about. Ethical on the part of the government and also ethical on the part of the people that actually receive these funds. Like everybody else, you see, it reminds me of one thing. In Gambia, there has always been this zero-sum game. That is why our politics can be very contentious. Yeah. In other words, to say, falonga falo. Going all the way back in the First Republic. If you are not an insider, if you do not, people talk about the Banjo Cabal, they were the ones getting the, the deals. I mean, people, people like me that are old enough, we realize when Seusise get the cleansing service and everybody was an uproar. Governments always do that. In a poor developing country, there is always a tendency. That is why even business people, they're always very quiet when it comes to being very critical to government. Because if you are not in bed with government, in other words, if you're not quiet, or you, then most likely your business is not going to be viable. And the media is not an exception. Now, for me, what government did was unethical. Mm -hmm. Absolutely unethical. There is absolutely nobody who can defend that. It's the way they went about it. Pasamba said something. Should we spend $40 million and $600,000 on giving it to media houses? For me, that is a decision that a government is going to make. How important is it? How is it going to help our democracy? 
Are we better off investing it in that instead of investing it in ambulances? Anytime we look at the budget, we're always debating, saying, oh, no, how is the feeling corona spend? So for me, that is always going to be an issue, whether the government is spending our money the way it is supposed to be spent. The problem that I have is the process that they went about doing that. Should government be able to exploit the private sector to channel their information? If the public channel is not getting it done, they have decided that, you know what, maybe we need to rethink this. Maybe because government is always talking about we have a communication problem. There are things that we want to put out there. It's not getting to the people. And now not only relying on public channel, let's go to the private channel to do that. But you see, the way they went about it, it created trust problem. It creates an ethical problem. People seriously believe that, and we're not talking about, like Pasamba said, if NPP wants to run an ad, they can go anywhere and do it. I remember when we had Mort Sise, the, um, the chief of staff, and there was this issue with Fatu Ture having GIA, um, I mean, uh, GRA, and they pulled those contracts that they had with Fatu Ture because they were not happy with the editorial policies that Fatu Ture had. And all of us were up in row were saying, oh, that's not, that's not really fair. They shouldn't do that. So to tell you that government contracting independent media always been around, even the standard that ran it, they're carrying GRA's ads and information. There's nothing wrong with that. As far as I'm concerned, what government did wrong was when you take money from the consolidated fund, taxpayers, people are going to have a problem with that. People think it's very unethical. And let's call it for what it is. The only reason Patuture was left out, the only reason Pamudu Bojan was left out, and I'm going to name in names just to be very clear as hell, is because they think these people they have opposition leanings and they are not going to channel those funds. But there is only one problem. They do pay taxes like Fatu Network. They do pay taxes like QTV. So if you're going to do these things, if you want, we were just talking about leadership, that you are empathized and you are fair and you want to take the country to the next level, instead of reaffirming what we've always been known for, I mean, then you're going to fail because people distrust that. What they did was wrong because these people are taxpayers' money. If you want to, Dr. Bass said something. I do believe government should spend money on independent media to help them. You know, do we have this media um, in Saria? Come here every Sunday. There are expectations. You know, I'm in Alisa. People that are watching this in the thousands, they do not give us a dime. So I can understand somebody running a media house in the Gambia. You have to make payroll. You have to pay all your expenses. Nobody is giving it to you. There is nothing wrong with government, a serious government, who said, you know what? We are going to capacitize you guys. There are a lot of ways that they could do. They could say, you know what? We're going to give you five years moratorium for not paying taxes. Use those funds to build up your food. They could do it by saying, we are going to give money to each media house to help you do A, B, and C. A serious, fair-minded government that is ethical would do that. No. Sir, I, I fully concur with what you're saying. I mean, I have to go in a few minutes, but I yes, just very want to... quickly. Well, let's look at the ethical part of the people that receive it. I am one person that believes there's not a single media house that would turn down that money. Now, where I'm going to help them accountable, and where I think it should be fair, let's look at their editorial policies. If they receive this money and they turn out to be a mouthpiece of the government, and that's when people should go up and say, hey, this media house, media house in Nterala. But just because they were given that money, so somehow you assume a media house, the media house in Nterala, I don't think that that is fair. Some people do say, let's say for instance, this contract was signed all the way back in February. Patu Kamara had an um, interview with Quran, and they exposed the biggest scandal if that media house was to compromise its editorial policies because of the five million, I have a feeling that he wouldn't have run that and run away with it. I doubt yeah. it very much. So all I'm saying is, 
And this is where the government is wrong with a Pamodu Bojang or even a Fatu Ture, that Fatu Ture has an opposition leading. Last week, I watched an interview Fatu Ture had with Alaki Usain Wadabo. Dr. Ba, you said that, yes, the United Democratic Party feel comfortable going to Fatu Ture. Fairly or unfairly, they have the perception that it's very friendly to the United Democratic Party. But when you listen to that interview, I can guarantee you that the question that she asked, if Alaji Usain Odabo would have come to this program, I don't think we would ask harder questions than that. Every question that was asked, she asked it. She did. So in other words, for me, the ethical aspect has a lot more to do with the government. The way they yep. when you are a government, you need to shy away from that. In as much as, even if you believe that these media houses, they are not fair to you or they are not friendly to you, Dr. Sise is going to be on Fatu today on Thursday. Wouldn't, I mean, he's going to go there and they're going to send their information. Dr. today was here last, I mean, Dr. Sise was here last week. Doc, Dr. Sise. Dr. Sise. He was here last week. They didn't pay a dime. Just to pass on, reaffirm what you were saying. They could have taken all this information to these media houses <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, and put out there without spending one butoot. You know what I mean? Now, if they're doing it to help the media houses, I think it's a good thing. But they have to be even handed. Yeah. That sense of fairness, I think it's important. I mean, and 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 and, and, and that's just the that's just the reality, the way they went about it. But also, people are going out there attacking some of the people that have gotten the money and questioning their journalistic integrity. Allow these people until they start basically putting out there and supporting this government with their agenda, then uh -huh, five million has something to do with it. But until and unless that happens, I think that it is very unfair to question the integrity of those media houses that receive the five million. I seriously yeah. do have a problem. So if you're talking about the ethical aspect, is the government that wants to question. And also, it's fair game to say that why are we spending six hundred thousand dollars on I mean I mean I mean these media houses? I mean you can agree to disagree. We can have our disagreements, but I personally believe that whether it's QTV, whether it's Fatu Network, whether it's and also Sarian, I believe that they were given five million each and not ten million. The one that I didn't know about was the um, the, con the, the content providers. Now. Because I've never heard of them. In my, <laughs> but just point of correction, Musa. But just point of correction. Mm. Just point of correction. Paradise yeah. was given ten point two. Just to just to let you know. Okay. I yeah. mean, I mean, I, I I thought that everybody was given. Maybe maybe. No, maybe no, no, I'm, I'm just, it's out there. It's out there. You can go view it. Don't don't okay, quote I mean, me. It's, it's, it's possible. <laughs> no, it's possible. I, no, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. No, no, no. I mean, I, I, I thought you, because I, when I heard Dr. Sisi said. It's out there. When you do the tabulation, on, it's actually 41 I know, I million said, plus. On QTV, I mean, on um, what they call it, um, Peter Gomez, I think. Peter What's Gomez that? said that um, Dr. Sisi. On that interview, he said all of them were given five million. But anyway, it's neither here nor yeah, there. Musa, Musa, I just wanted to say so. But last key, you Mondo, because I think he wants to say so before he goes. Momo, key, right? Uh, Melvin, I know you wanted to come in. I've sent you the link, and uh, Madi, I've also sent you the link if you want to join us because I know both Ndau and Key would be leaving us soon. So, yeah. well, Melvin yeah. Roberts uh, and Naka uh, and Key, Madi Joba, I think you both yeah. the links. Check your uh, yeah. Facebook inbox yeah. and uh, you can join us oh, pa, uh, ma, ma, i have to check out now um I yeah i i also have to leave now <laughs> yeah, but, um, so, so, so we have we have the serial and the fuller and they're all living at the same time <laughs> 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 yeah thank you guys for for having me okay your, uh, you know uh i think we need to keep the conversation going. <laughs> but i must say that they are play soccer they do not know how to you know why why you didn't get them late anyway so i can always jump on when i come back good yeah i'm not going to get you know you know so okay thank you guys thank you for your insights you know at the end of the day this is this is the beauty of democracy and this is what we're trying to nurture we cannot all agree but at least let's have the conversation 
Yeah, and Absolutely. that is why yeah. we have the For the People by the People show. Yeah. That's know? it. <laughs> the, 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 the old, the Dr. very Ma. young, and the young. Thank you, man. <laughs> you know, the media should be as more representative as for the people by the people. Because you've got Tarian there, and you've got Joe there, with the Doyle leaning and with the UDP leaning. It's a great sandwich. And, 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 and Musa, Musa Jeng is PPP or, or NPP. So just, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Independent. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ba. Thank you, Musa. Yeah. Yeah. But most, most Bile Health Silly me because I've sent those people the links. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes, so yes, Coach. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Coach and Musa. Musa, I want to I wanna make sure that I, I take you on on this one, though, because you said, Sariang, the media, the government should help. I'm not saying the government should not help the private medias, right? What mm -hmm. I'm trying to say is, I think there is ways to substitute, like by, you know, maybe giving them a moratorium on taxes. No, yeah, 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 yeah. we agree on that. Physical. No, no, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me finish. Let me finish this. So, <laughs> so, so I, I think. I think I, I think I don't want to make sure I provide a clarity. I'm not against any media house, but I think if we are going to talk about leadership, and you said one something about business one on one, leadership <laughs> is getting things done through orders, but also it takes integrity, unwavering character, correct, and not to accept failure. That is all part of leadership. You have to be an upright person. No, be self-awareness. I think it's a big part of it. If you know who you are and what your purpose is to serve others, I think it's very, very key to leadership. So I just want to kind of lay that as clarity. You know, Hamga Musa, sometimes, you know, you get these no, 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 Sarian, Bilai, I'm no, I just want to provide that. Different. No, 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 no. I know you got you got some MPP talking points. So I just want no, to no, make no, sure. No, 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 no. But this is not NPP. Manwan Alenala, we are all on the same boat. Man, oh, okay. I like to hold the government responsible. He, I said they are unethical. <laughs> where I have a problem with Moine, where government should spend this money. I know that for me, I wouldn't spend that kind of money on private media. I think we have better priorities. But all I'm saying and, is, and you know, this was reminds me reminds me of most mm. when the meet the people store happened. Yeah, <laughs> and they were in Basse. Oh, there's a lot to reference. And there was uh, the minister of I can never name his ministry. My boy, his minister, mm. administrative yeah. testing reform. How oh, many? It's too long. Oh, I saw yeah. him the other day. Yeah, in this year, I was telling him, I can never remember the name of your ministry because it's too long for me. There was something that he said, that if you're working for the people, if you're doing the right thing, you don't need some a messenger to the president to tell him that you're doing the, doing the job. You don't need Gaveli Pulnyi Tachul Dilan and you're doing a good job. The people must feel the work that you're doing. So if you're a government and you are addressing the needs and aspirations of the people, of course you can go and do your propaganda. But you don't need to spend that much money for the people to know that you are doing their work because they should feel that work. And there is something that Bas said, which is very important. And it comes back to the priorities. And yeah. what he's saying, Moine, you have a country where the majority are either pre, pre diabetic or are, are diabetic. And you cannot even have a dialysis machine in that country. Those are the bread and butter issues of the Gambit people, the concerns of the Gambit people. So what, what we have here, I think, is misguided priorities, where you are so eager for acceptance from the people that you are forgetting to do what would gain your acceptance from them. Because it's not a matter of what are they going to do, content? Because there is Faduma or these names that they talk about, and one of them is linked to the permanent secretary or whatever, I don't know. So they would make these things, so us the roads... You guys let them. And in fact, they didn't even need to pay them. Musa, if you go to YouTube, there is this guy that I watch on YouTube. I go there every time. And all he does is showing the work that is being done on the IOIC roads. That's what they're doing. So you go there, you can just type Gambia and that would come up. You don't need to pay that guy 5.2 million. And guess what that guy is going to do? Because the more people that watch his, that watch his program on YouTube, he will get money from it. But what I'm saying here is you have all these things misplaced. There are more pressing issues. You see, 
I think ne lugay le ne sometimes ne ya lot of career. I think what happens to this government because uh, no like uh, Melvin check your inbox because it is this account. I check your what do they call that inbox? The Facebook one. Messenger. 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 Check your messenger. I I sent it. Uh, what was I saying? Because for the most part, they may have even signed something five years ago. But they would always announce it at a time when Gambians are in dire needs. And then it becomes like, why are we spending our money here? And of course, every expenditure will be defended. Just like when they came and defended those cars that they bought for the no, National no, Assembly no, members. But, but, but that's what I'm saying. Eh? Obviously, we've, we've always going to be having these agreements and disagreements where government is spending funds. When you're a poor country, Clearly, clearly, most reasonable Gambians wouldn't think that spending $600,000 on helping the media is the way to go. I think they could have utilized it in a different manner. I mean, they, 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 the issue of fairness. So, Mansiriang, I don't really see a difference between your position and my position. I mean, the, the, the unfairness part of it, no reasonable person can defend it. But all, I also like to remind people that our politics of zero-sum game, there is a reason why businessmen they tend to be aligned with the government. So they're thinking, you running a business, <laughs> the Gambia government is the, what I would say, the biggest customer. Any business who doesn't rely on them, you will be out of business. And the media house is no exception. I can guarantee you that. Most of these media houses, they will all be able to pay their payroll because of ads that they were getting from the GRA, go to coffee time, and you see, it was either ad from the OIC. Now, Pasamba said something. But I do believe, though, Pasamba, that government can decide me, okay, I want this information to be out there, and I want to exploit certain channels to put it out there. Now, what they have just done, I think, may undermine that. So, taking a low lesson motivation, because I'm still questioning why, okay, what is the obsession of, for, for them to do this? Are they doing it to help these? private media houses, are they seriously doing this because of this communication problem that they've, um, that they've always been complaining? And that's what they want to fix. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, what is, the, what is the rationale? What is the thinking? These people that were behind it, why did they decide, they, you know what, we need to put this money here and it's going to help us out? Okay. So, 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 so Sarya, what do you think is really their motivation? Or is it just uh, lack of leadership on in, incompetence, or there is not no. more to it? Okay. All right. So, 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 one thing. Someone texts me, Musa. You mentioned something about for the people by the people show, and uh, he was asking. You mentioned something if if for the people by the people show something. I I, I don't get the whole gist, but he says, is Musa saying for the people by the people response? I said no, it's not. For the peer, I'm not at least I'm not aware. It's it, the ads that are running on for the people by the people are paid by private business folks, yeah, nonprofits and stuff. There is no government whatsoever. So what but, is it, what is they asking? I, I I think they are kind of confused with that segue. What you said, I, I don't know what you can you clarify. What I'm that? saying is, Doctor Cisse was here. He didn't have to pay us a dime. Okay, and was able to get his message across. Basically, the argument that I'm trying to make is government could still be able to go to Fatu Network, go to QTV, go to um, Kir Fatu, and Without still get their information out. Okay. So Fekene, their motivation is to channel government. I mean, there was somebody told me something. You know, whether it's a bank or an entity or even government enterprises, if you want coverage from these media houses, you know what you do? You pay them. You seriously do. For them to take care of. so for anybody to think that this is something new you're mistaken because most of these media houses when you're facing moto elect that was in and do all that and pay their payroll and then cover your I mean, uh, government policies and programs it's not I mean it, 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 it's not gonna work especially a country for the private sector is not really there in a country like the united states or in a country like even senegal when you watch I mean, their programs i mean saying 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 theaterini you would know that the private industry is behind it. And again, that's just what it is, you know? All right. All right. Let me let me answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so Musa, Musa, I think, 
the honest truth is mm -hmm. this advertisement, I think I think we have to clear, we have to kind of communicate in clear paths here. And I've seen a lot of misconception and, and even Dr. wrote something on his plot page saying that in Malawi, the vice president had something, something. I, I, and I saw other folks saying, oh, you know, it happens in the United States. Uh, it happens in other places. And, and, and I think it's a wrong comparison. Uh, here is the thing why I'm saying. Basically, this is the borough re-election campaign strategy to get his message out there, what he's doing. And as you both said, you and Coach, there's absolutely nothing wrong for MPP to run an ad to any of these private medias. Absolutely not. Even if they handpick one and said, this is it's absolutely okay. But a government, and I heard, mm -hmm. I reached to someone and I asked someone, I said, is this funds? And you, someone actually, I think Coach also asked this question uh, that Foria raised. Was this amount appropriated, meaning approved by the government, by the National Assembly? I was told that, you know, and I don't have, I don't have any facts to that. I'm just speculating. But he said, as usual, they're going to roll this $40 million into the supplemental appropriation bill. That's what they're going to basically do. It's going to go back to the bill for taxpayers. They're going to foot this bill. If MPP wants to promote their agenda, I don't think it's right. And, and everybody <laughs> is saying, oh, government is, is, is expensive. Government, no, it's not. They need to go in there and raise their funds. And they can use that to promote Barrow's re-election no, no, agenda. But, in but, 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 but I have to interject here. And I don't want you to accuse me of holding briefs for the NPP. There is nothing that says that these messages are put out there. To, you, you just believe that. You're just making... Uh, I, making here, here's, the, here's, the, here's the push. No, I'm just saying, it never, there was nothing that was said that this was to promote the NPP agenda. It Let's is not. It's Let's not. The facts as we see them. This, no, what they're saying is, this is to promote the government's agenda. What is the you government know? agenda? Let, let, let's, let's be fair. No, no, yeah. what is the government's agenda, Musa? But, but, but that has, I'm just saying... I am like, asking you a question. What is the government's agenda? The government agenda is the government agenda. I'm not saying, I mean, the okay, government I agenda is the government I agenda. Up, it's the people's agenda. No, no. All, all I'm just all saying, I'm saying is, is no. But you, you are basing this on your opinion, right? Yes, that's your opinion. Yes, absolutely. Then the only reason why they're doing it is to promote the NPP as a party. The re-election right? strategy has been rolled out, you know. right? So, so that's what I'm saying. And and you know what? We had so much priorities and challenges that this 40 million can be allocated to. I agree totally. Okay. Totally. So, agree. so I, and that's my ag argument. I agree totally. There right. are better priorities that we could spend this money. The only disagreement that we have is also, I mean, should government be out there advertising on private media? You said you don't you don't think they need to do that? The what? That government should not be advertising. Government should, but in a most oh, here's the thing. Again, again, I'm I'm gonna push back on this notion. I'm just asking that, a hold question. On, hold on, hold on. You get you ask me a question. It's my right to provide clarity, right? So here is the first thing. When they said it, they said this was a restricted tender. So meaning this was done in line of GPPA procurement act. So I am saying if that's true, that is true. That's not and true. I, it's only in Gambia that I hear restricted tender. No, what I'm what problem, I, oh, give me a second, Musa. I no, got, no, I'm reinforcing what you said. You no, 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 but, but give me a chance now. No, before you reinforce, before you reinforce what I said, I am here on the platform to speak my mind. So you don't have to reinforce anything. You are asking me to provide clarity, and I'm providing clarity. So you are asking me if that's my position, because this is not the first time. You are preempting. So I'm just going to provide clarity that there is two procurement sources, sole source and open competition. So they said they did restricted tender, meaning they reach out to few and say provide. And, and I think iAfrica TV put it on their website saying that they respond to solicitation. So if it's going to be an open bed, 
How come others did not participate? If it's going to be on behalf of the government, the government doesn't own by Adam Abaro and few selected folks. It's open by everyone. As you rightfully said, I will take you back to your position again. You said, care far to pay taxes, member caring pay taxes, all other media, I'll come on all these people and Gambia talent promotions. Why, why didn't they were provided to provide bids? And in an open and transparent manner, they review their bids and they felt that they met the criteria and they can fulfill their requirements, select them. I guess that's what my question, that's where I think that is wrong, Musa. That's why I'm saying. I'm not saying the okay. government does it. The I point, am not saying the, the government point, should do it. But the way the and the manner it was executed, that's what's wrong. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. We don't okay. have any difference when it comes to that. And the other thing that I wanted to align myself with your statement, Moine, you cannot have an open tender and still have a restricted tender. That to me is even oxymoron. That's not even okay, possible. Okay, just thank you, you very much. Thank open. you. So when I was reaffirming what you are saying, as far okay. as I'm concerned, I have a serious problem with the government and the way they handled it. Bobo Mom, I'm with the difference. Where I think, I thought that this is what you were saying, Moine, government should not, should not basically use I mean, private media. To the government does that all the time, man. The government right. does is that. The there is somebody, somebody in the vehicle. Who's this? Is this Melvin? Yeah. Me Melvin. <laughs> good evening, sir. Good evening, Melvin. How are you doing? It's good to have Fine, you on. I'm trying to bring them a bundle as well. Go ahead, Melvin. Okay. Good, e good evening, Coach. <laughs> good evening, Serian. Good evening, good evening sir. Melvin. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, interesting program as always. Um, very engaging, and it's always a moment. It's always a moment to learn. Um, so I know the reason why I was tagged on the program because I was driving was because I, I did a post where I had a different position <laughs> on everything that was going on. No, it's okay. But, but what I tried to explain is, and I've listened to 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 you guys when you when, like you know talking, and. I could reduce it to you guys having an issue with the process. Yes. And I absolutely agree that the process that was employed by government seem on the face of it, not to be very equitable as in it is not fair. Now, my argument was the the, the segment of society that feels that government should not advertise and government should not sell its agenda. I think that is a very redundant statement because government has a responsibility to showcase whatever it is that it's doing. But because it is very prevalent in our society and in the Gambia, most especially, that everything about government is seen to be an abstract so I absolutely disagree when Syrian tried to divorce the, the, the projects of government with that of the NPP. Because the NPP is a political entity, it's a political party. But the government has a responsibility to sell and showcase its agenda. And you do not expect NPP as a political party to fund the branding of government. When when NPP took over as the ruling party, it metamorphosed from a political party to a government entity where you and I, regardless, irrespective of political affiliation, if irrespective of what we feel of the government, are part and parcel of that government. Where you and I, irrespective of whatever the government is doing, our foremost agenda is to ensure that government is workable. The government is progressive for each and every one of us, regardless of our political party affiliation. When it comes to election, when it comes to party politics, we can sell the party's agenda. We can sell the party's manifesto. We can sell the objectives of the party, what the party wants to do once they assume office. That is the responsibility of the party. But when it comes to government, a sitting government, it is the responsibility of the government to brand itself. And I gave an example where the American government sets aside a budget of $1 billion for adverts and PR.
Now you can you can make the argument, and, and like I said, I did not try to compare Gambia and America. It would be foolhardy to do so. But what I tried to do was to build a premise around the fact that most times in the Gambia, when we talk about issues or anything Gambia, we draw inspiration from the US. And what I was trying to say is, even though it's a bigger economy, even though you can say the US is not a, a struggling economy as Gambia, you can say that the US is not suffering or having issues of 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 um of of um you know electricity um clean water access to healthcare facilities and all that kind of thing but the point i was trying to make is a government such as the us that has got a brand worldwide sees and understands the reason why you have to showcase the good side of government and that was my point. So I was not trying to compare or draw a comparison, but to show that it is absolutely important. It is very crucial for government to showcase its work and what it's doing. Now, Syrian made a very, very important, important point. But again, before making that, before, before solidly um, supporting that line of argument, we need to see the contract what is the contract document between the government and the media houses now either based on the con I, i'm not sure you can hear me anymore i'm hearing like a really really loud noise i don't know if it's no, if i'm we clear can if I'm, yeah, yeah we can we can hear you you're coming in and out but we can hear you Generally. okay okay Demba, maybe you need to mute Demba coming in right now Demba. Can you mute Demba? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so 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 basically if you if you see if we were to see the contract and know exactly what are the contract what you know what are the contractual terms between the media houses and the government, then we can begin to make the argument that this is a a, a political campaign strategy. Oh shit. This is a political oh, I have to hold my phone now, it just dropped. <laughs> So this is a this is a a, um, a a political campaign strategy that the NPP is using, but we won't be able to determine that until we know what exactly is the contract. And now, when it comes to the argument about using the national broadcaster, we all know what we said individually and collectively when Jame was using the the the, the, the GRTS as a propaganda tool. Mm -hmm. But it seems to my mind, I may be wrong, I may be, I may be totally wrong, that the same individuals that argued against what Jame was doing are now in support of the battle government doing just that, utilizing the, 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 the GRTS as a propaganda tool. I see it differently. Yes, it is the state broadcaster. It is owned by the government. But every single Gambian, irrespective of political affiliation, has a right to showcase whatever it is on GRTS. Now, this is radically different from government wanting to rebrand, government wanting to show the positive side. Now, the argument can be made, government is not doing nothing. They're not doing anything. What, what can government show? But that is a subjective discussion. That is a discussion where one quarter can say, yes, government has not done anything. Another quarter can say that, yes, we're seeing what the government is doing. At the end of the day, it is that quarter, that segment that decided they were going to overwhelmingly vote for President Barrow. President Barrow did not get to the state house by in oblivion. It was a sector of Gambians that believed that he was the best possible candidate to lead the Gambia at that time. So when the government decides to brand, it is subjective whether they have something to brand, they, ha they don't have anything, they have something to showcase. But you do not expect media houses to run adverts, to run advertisement, to brand the government for free. It is not possible. These are private media houses that have you know they have a they, they have to to pay their staff they have to pay salaries they have logistical needs all of these have financial implications you do not expect them to run the brand to run an advert for government to showcase what government is doing so i think it is right for government to do this 
However, what I have a problem is the timing one and the process. But again, when we look at the process, we have to be honest with ourselves as Gambians. What happened to the COVID funds that was given to media houses? Was it given to every media house? No, it was not. It was given to selected media houses. But the loudest of voices now that are criticizing the government method were silent at the time because they were benefactors to that COVID fund. So when we speak as Gambians, we need to be honest to ourselves first. We cannot criticize selectively. We cannot criticize when it goes against us. And that is why we should engage and we should advocate for a fair, equitable process at all sector and segment of society. So for me, this is what I see. And this is what I don't agree with. Because let us ask ourselves the question, if every media house benefited from this five million would the noise be this loud would people still advocate and say that 50 million could be better utilized for something else i, and, I think that, uh, melvin just to do uh two things that you said uh first the issue that most people have with this is the pro and I think if the process is wrong, then you have a bigger problem because government is supposed to adhere to the, to the laws that are set forth. And secondly, the COVID money, from what I remember very well, is that it was done through the GPU. It was not government that was sitting there telling media houses, okay, you, you, you will get, you, you too will not get. There were some who turned it down. I know uh, West Coast did not want any money from them, did not take it. Or their media houses worked uh, with the GPU to be able to get it. But even if that were to be the case, that it was wrong then, nobody said anything, it is wrong now, well, why must we say something? Then we live in a, in, a, in a very serious society. Because I think at the end of the day, what is wrong is wrong. When we started talking about the wrong, maybe immaterial versus the wrongness that continues to happen. This is, this is my argument, and I'm not the lawyer here, you are the one. Yeah. But I, no, I agree. I, I, process is wrong, it is wrong. That's where, the, that's where, the, that's the starting point. But, but the thing is, though, we are assuming, we are assuming thus far until we can see the contract document, until we can understand the GPPA process, that the process is wrong. For example, it's just now that I am learning because Syrian mentioned that it was a restricted tender. Now, if it's a restricted tender, Syria, and I know somebody made a comment that you cannot you cannot use both open tender and restricted tender. So, yeah, so that is that is definitely an oxymoron, and that is confusing because I don't think that was what was employed because it would divide it would you know it would be devoid of logic because if it was an open tender, then every single media house would be aware. If it's a restricted tender then yes, selected media houses would be contacted just as is provided for under the act under what is known as a restricted tender. Now you can make the argument again, do we, why, what was the need for it to be a restricted tender and not an open tender? But, it is, but is it provided for by the law? Yes, it is. Is it provided for by the act? Yes, it is. So again, unless we understand from the side of government why the method and that sort of a process was taking we cannot just sit and say that it was wrong but 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 uh, 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 just want to say can so, we bring just Gamba? he just wants no, no, to come coach, in for a don't you think don't you think musa that the owners want to respond to me and we quick to share okay, that. Sure, tell the gambian sure. people how their money is being spent. The, the bigger problem here is we cannot sit and say, you know, unless we hear from the government, we cannot say anything. It is the government's responsibility to tell the Gambian people how our money had been spent. And this is why the argument, where they, where did they go to the National Assembly? Was it allocated for? Come and tell us. If you have told us from the very beginning, if this was not leaked, chances are we would not have known about it. it yes, coach. Necessary. We are just hearing about it now. It is our money. Coach. Taxpayers' money. Yes. So, so we cannot restrict the citizens from asking questions, asking them to be patient until we get the information. While the people that we employ, the people that we give our money to, who spent our money, have not told us how that money is spent. And that is where the starting point is. The government must be transparent to the people that they're No, coach, coach, I agree. 
I agree. If you realize most of our conversations that we had prior, I would always say this, that mm -hmm. our government is a reactionary government. It is. So the government would now, because of what is going on on social media, because of the questions being asked, they would then react to that and give us information. And it should be the other way around. Government should give information and citizens can make decision on that information and decide whether whatever government does is good or bad but unfortunately in the gambia it's the other way around citizens find out things like you said if if if, if this did not appear in the standard publication probably we wouldn't know that it's even ongoing so, so melvin so melvin thank you for the rejoinder i, I just want to make few clarities here <clears throat> and, and and in terms of procurement the procurement restricted open tender I think the baseline, at least, based on this, this is my domain. At least I did this for almost 20 years in the United States, both in the military side and Department of Energy, just to let you know. The, the fact that if it's restricted, you have to provide justification. And the key point of that justification is <clears throat> why do you select that particular media that they can and which? others cannot provide and 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 i sat on 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 procurement meetings whereby we debate we score we look at their past performance we look at the criteria to is the liquidity how about if the contract if they cannot deliver what the government put forth what is the next step as if we get into the legal reams of things but but but, but what i'm trying to say here is the restrict yes government might have but what is the baseline what is the tiebreaker that these select fuels cannot provide and yes the documentation will see and also i think the the, the, the most people the the entity that owes gambians to scrutinize this is the national assembly i think they can unravel this very easily all they need to do the key play was gaipa involved because you know gaipa is the procurement authority whereby they There's can no provide driver. guidance and oversee these issues. Yes. So were, they, were, were they involved? What were their level of involvement to seek oversight and ensure that there was impartiality in the execution of these contracts? I think that is what my breakaway point is. And these are key ingredients, whether it's an open or restricted tender. But the most you got you, I can come in and say restricted, but I have to jump hoops. It takes a minimum to three to six months, even before that contracts get bottom line, because it needs to go up for the CEO to get, get it signed off and everything. So that's how tricky and delicate that is. So that's what we're saying, the process and how it was executed, irrespective of whether the contract documents comes out or what. But I think based on what we knew for now, it was not open. And what is the breakaway that say, Paradise TV or Star TV cannot do that. Kerfatu cannot do or member caring or somebody else. Those are things that you look at in terms of selecting this. What art can they provide that others cannot provide? And they think that is the key breakaway there. Let's bring up exactly. two guys. Demba Bandit, Guy Nako Guy. What's up, Demba? <laughs> Demba. <laughs> Yes, Musa. Are you, How are you? Are you on mute? <laughs> so Guys, uh, you know, sorry, sorry the about that. I'm, 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 I'm at an open house. Somebody just walked in. Now we gotta set things right, brother. But I'm, I'm, I'm at an open house and somebody just walked in. Oh. So. But anyway, I just very, very briefly, I am. Yes. Uh, I've been listening to you guys, listening to Suleiman Ba, listening to uh, Modu Um, you know, I'm a big proponent of you know, the media houses, private media houses being funded, okay? Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, the, the, really the questions that the Gambians must ask themselves is, are you concerned about the source of this funding? What is the source of this funding? And should the National Assembly have a say in the source of this funding, okay? And are you concerned about the process? Obviously, a lot of us are concerned about the process, whether it was an open process or a closed process, okay? The question, Musa, is, the timing, and not only the timing, but also the government. It is time for, for, for census in the Gambia. Go to the Central Statistics website and go look at that website. 
Mm. Zero information. How many websites can two, you know, $40 million is built? How many? How many websites can $40 million is built? A whole, a whole lot of websites. A whole lot of websites. And so if, you, if you're really concerned about the citizens' access to information, why not build those websites and allow people to access information by themselves? Why not? And here is why we think you know, the, the media is compromised by accepting these funds. The, the Fatu Network, for example, just an example, or any other beneficiary, they knew about this way back when they signed this. If they're interested in the public interest, why couldn't they disclose it? Why didn't somebody report about it? This is why we think the media is compromised by accepting something like this. Because if you're protecting, if you're a watchdog, then you must you must disclose or you must report on something like this. But they sat on it. Every media house sat on it. Until now, it was leaked by the standard. So the government, the priority is, you know, what is our priority really? Where, where should we spend $40 million? You know, awarding private media houses? Absolutely not. Go build some websites. You know, this this is the this is the question that we have. And you know, and you know, the, coach, you remember I brought this up when the government was exclusively, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, spon uh, sponsoring or patronizing West Coast Radio. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have I have nothing against West Coast Radio or Peter Gomez, uh, Uncle Peter. But when government was exclusively going to that for all their advertisement, all their programs in the morning, I brought this up privately. I brought it up. Guess what? Why the West Coast is not included now? Because they feel that West Coast has benefited before, so they decided not to include them. This is the danger of setting a president no, of Demba, our Demba, Demba, private media houses. Demba, private. Demba, private. I don't think that's why West Coast. Was yeah, excluded. I don't. I don't also think that's because why West Coast was excluded. No, I don't think that's the reason why. That's not the reason. The reason is you have to have audio visual. You know what I'm telling that people can see west coast is radio i i i, I just i just but, that but then musa but then musa, musa that would be very problematic because mm. the reason why paradise paradise radio had 10 million exactly. twice the amount was exactly. because they paid for radio and television yes, okay, yes. i didn't know that exactly. thought, like, yes we're telling you musa. Mentioned that i thought Far paradise at the same amount with the other so so yeah. so, so oh, if paradise if paradise got 10 million then definitely uh, uh star tv would also get that much because they also have, they also have a radio and a television yes, yes. And, and you know that what is what I mean, what... Mm. by the time we are done this would have exceeded the 40 million that they are banding around it does not add up Mama Mama, Mama, it doesn't, it doesn't add up even Dr. Cisse answered it. When Peter was saying that we had this 46 million, it's like, no, it is not 46 million. And he went and said, take 5 million times the total number of um, um, entities that, that are getting Exactly. And that's what Dr. Cisse said, unless the amount is different. That's what I'm yeah, telling so. you, Musa. By the time we are done, this would have exceeded at least 60 million. It's a, it's a, the whole thing is, but again, like I said to the Gambian people, you know, we have responsibility. There was something that Halifa Salah said. Sani karta mate, nguri mate regla la jural. So we yeah. can sit here and cry over spilled milk. Of course, we have to speak out. But again, elections do have consequences. Because it doesn't matter with everything that we are facing, Musa, in that context. Everything that our people are facing. I just saw a video the other day of this paternity ward in Charmin. Musa, I could not even finish watching it. Yeah. I mean, manager. So you have all these problems, but our government believes that the only thing more in it, you, you know, you know how we live. You see how our people live. So how I mean, that even that basic basic gena nice na sorko. Everybody say guy to pasare halisi, and you don't even have the money to buy breakfast in the morning. That's how we live. We have to, we have to really become a more serious people than the way that we live. And our government lives the same way. Our government is like a, a, a somebody who is on welfare and driving a Lexus, living large. It doesn't make sense. This money that yeah. we are spending does not even make sense. It's just ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. And they are lying to the people. It's much more than 40 million. Because if some are getting 10 million, then it's more than 40 million. And maybe there needs, to, there needs to be, I think there needs to be um, a clarification from the information minister. I mean, he's going to be on 
on um, Kirfatu on Thursday. Hopefully, hopefully he will uh, get all the facts because it looks like, uh, based on it, it looks like he may not know much about this whole thing. Yeah, because when he, he, the time that they said they signed it, he was not even minister. He it said was, very clearly, "Ne, mom, hamna ne, pass out forty million." You know, that's what he said. Yeah. Okay. So what, let's 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 wait and see. I don't know whether Gamba is still. So Melvin, so what's your final um? Your final, your final take. No, I, I was just gonna say that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really think. I, I agree absolutely that what we should focus on is the process, how things were done, where this money is coming from, whether it had national assembly approval, and to understand the bidding process that was employed by government, who got what whether this media house that media house i don't think that should be the argument and that's what i was talking against right i don't believe that should be the argument because what it seems if that is the argument it seems it's because one person did not get and another person has that's why we're talking like that right. the 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 the, 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 the conversation you know the conversation you know has to be honest and when it comes to this bit about about buying buying media um, patronage or buying the media houses or using it as a propaganda tool that goes back the you know the buck goes back to the media houses are we saying that i mean and a classic example would be west coast radio just because government was giving and directing all their adverts to west coast um radio it did not diminish peter gomez's um you know ethical standards to hold government yeah. accountable I agree totally. It did not. It did so not. because go, because government is using Fatu Kamara or using another Harona Drame to advertise does not mean that they are not going to hold government accountable. And if we're assuming thus that that is what is going to happen, what we are saying is we have media houses that lack credibility, lack integrity, and are of no substance. And the same argument could be used. The government is funding the judiciary. The right. president is appointing judges. The yeah. president constitutes Supreme Court. Are we are, are we saying to ourselves that because that is being done, because the judges of the Superior Court are appointed at, by the president, even though albeit recommendation by the General Legal Council, are we saying that every matter that these judges that the Supreme Court adjudicates upon, that it would favor the government? It is a redundant idea. So if we do not think that way of our judges, we do not think that way of a judiciary, why is it that we are making the same argument that because government is using a particular media for sponsorship, then they are buying out that media? What we are basically saying is that we don't have trust in the media personnel that are, that are running that show. What we are saying is that if the media is giving anything, they can be compromised. And I think that then goes way more on the media than on the government. But, but, but uh, Melvin, I heard what you're saying. I hear you loud and clear. But again, maybe that assumption, in as redundant as it may sound, may also help the media to remember, you know what, hey, we cannot, just like when uh, I Africa came out with a press release, to explain that, you know what, in spite of this money, we are not going to compromise our integrity policies. So sometimes, let's say, if you are a lawyer, like you are a soccer player, or you are a coach, you hear them criticizing criticizing you. Maybe the criticism is really out of place. But at least a human being is a human being. It will remind you to say, you know what? I should not let, let my guard down. Because of Absolutely. this, a lot of eyes would be on me. I think talking about it, I'm not talking about attacking people, personal attack. I'm not talking about that. But at least talking about it is will be forcing people to remember their responsibility to say that, you know what? We have to be a lot more guarded in our approaches. We have to be a lot more mindful because very easily we can be seen to have undermined our policies based on the money that has come in. I've not seen anything wrong. But what I'm saying here is the, the goes, goes, back to the, goes back to the government. The government should be honest with the Gambian people, should have come out from the very beginning. These are NPP money. These are Barra's money. These are the minister's money. These are the people's money. And say, you know what? We have contracted these people to do A, B, C, and D. Here it is. But now it will have to take the National Assembly to summon them there and they will go there and say, give me one week because we are trying to search for the documents and all that. And by the time the National Assembly will be done with them, we will see that maybe it's at least 80 million. And then I hope they would ask them because they are now, because as soon as they said that, the people that they named, they were two mediums. They said they are the content providers or whatever that people do not know about. One of them is 
that would be yes, but coach, but, but coach, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, coach. I, I agree absolutely with what you're saying. Um, and, and you're spot on, you're right, because the conversation would, 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 you know, make these individuals, these, you know, the people behind these media houses think twice, but also somebody like me coming with that perspective and giving a comparison with the judiciary would even give them a better, better understanding that, you know what, it's not just because the president has appointed you. It's not just because you're, they're using your media house to, 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 to advertise that you should now compromise your, 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 your ethical standards and your integrity. But, but what do you see on social media coach? And this is what me, I don't like. And probably some people think like I'm just controversial. No, I'm not. I like, I hate injustice of any form. I don't, I don't have any, I don't have an iota of relationship, whether personal or, or professional with Fatu Kamala. None, zero. In fact, I do not, I'm not one of the individuals. I don't comment on Fatu Kamara's post. She does not comment on my post. I don't share what she writes. I don't do anything. I respect her as a, as a human being, and that's where it stops. But there are media houses that we don't even know of, we've never heard of. The anger is not directed at this media house. It is directed at Fatu Kamara and her radio. I don't understand that. that that's, that's cool. too. I do yeah. not understand never understand it because it goes to show the dishonesty of gambians it is because people don't like her for whatever reason and for me that is what i cannot agree that is what i cannot subscribe to and that is why i keep saying if the anger is about the process stick to the anger that is directed at the process don't go and attack and disparage a single entity a single individual why she is gambian as well she is gambian as well I blame the government. That, that's it. And, and I think they're they are answerable to the people and must answer these questions. Mel Melvin, uh, thank there, you, sir. There, the obsession is more of single pointing personalities, accusatory, because somehow they have an issue with the individual. And, and that is what, that, that, that is what it is. But, you are yes. blinded. But, but you see, Musa, I, I understand that and it's distasteful, but it's not to be, to be avoided. Whatever it is, you, you're always going to get that. But that but doesn't make it right, day, though. No, it does not. And I, did, I didn't say it's right or anything. But what I'm saying here is, at the end of the day, whatever position they put in today is put in by our government. They just had to yeah. play fair. They just had to be transparent. And maybe this conversation would not even have emerged. That's it. Gambians were blind, blindsided by this. We just woke up one day and saw on the headlines that 40 million was spent. And everybody was, what, what, what the hell is going on? No, no, no apparently. apparently and apparently, no, this apparently, was apparently, since October, they said, or February. It, of, it was last year. It was in. It was in. It was, it was in. No, it was in 2023, but apparently the four, the the 40 million, from what I was told by somebody that, you know, is very close and has seen the contract documents and stuff, because I think the contract documents were done and prepared by the Ministry of Justice. I think that's where they went to sign it and things like that. But I was told that it's in phases. You have, you have um, I think you have three phases. So they're not even paying the 5 million at one go. I think they're given a particular amount. And then after th either three months or six months, there's a review and things like that. So I don't think, I don't, it's not, it's not like, I don't think they've even paid the money yet. But again, like you said, like you rightly said, it is because we don't know. Nobody knows this, the whole, everything is shrouded in mystery. So we don't know what the, what the reality is. And you know, you know what is easy about